Well, like, there was always, I just, like, the people were, like, could never believe that the Ewoks beat the Empire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they yeah. were about it. They are like the natives fighting the fucking Texas Rangers, dude. Yeah, I they backed fucking... into that fucking anti civilism so bad, I forgot I was talking about Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, that was a huge, like, were we talking about the war just now? That wasn't kosher. <laughs> oh, um, my God. Star Wars isn't kosher. Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this took a he- anyway. Come to Ram Jam, <laughs> <laughs> November This episode of Unloading Me is not brought to you by your favorite local dispensary who could be sponsoring this episode. Hey, local dispensaries, I love this bong. This cartridge and pen. Ooh. This new cartridge I haven't opened yet. What's that? What? This ad's for non-smoking? They don't want drug use in this ad? Oh. What was I saying? I'm high as fuck. Is that thing on? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Unloading Meat. Oh, I'm so excited to do this special. It's going to be a great episode. We have a returning guest and a new guest. Please welcome Dylan Walters and Nicola Burkett. Hey, thanks Woo. for having us. What's Thank up, you. guys? All three of us are going to be at this event this upcoming Saturday. Ramp Jam presents Ramp's Giving. Ramp's Giving. It's going to be a hit. Oh, fucking man. This is going to be awesome, man. Dylan is the mastermind behind all the marketing and everything behind Ramp's Giving this upcoming event, right? I have been uh, integral in making sure that all the people get in their right places for sure. Um, but it wouldn't be possible without our good friends, John and Lori. Hell yeah. Um, Lori's been coming out to do comedy a bunch recently, and she's kind of fallen into her comedy family. And John spent his hard work and time making the ramps. So this will be the third ramp jam that's ever happened with these ramps and these people. But it's the first one I've been a part of, and so I thank them for letting me be a part of it. Mr. It together. Ramp Jam. Mr. Ramp Jam. Ramp, Ramp underscore Jam. Jam at Instagram. Yeah. This is going to be a hell of a show, man. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the Instagram, man, because like, it's, it's an exclusive event. For those that don't know, you can't just walk up. We're not going to announce the address of this thing, man. DM. Yeah, they had uh, an old uh, page for it, which was like ramp.garden, because they call it the Garden Ramp. And as it was handed off to me, I decided to just make a new Instagram that provided all the imagery and stuff of the previous one because we were there at it just enjoying it as patrons and it was a blast and so it's ramp underscore jam and if you want to come to the ramp jam you got to dm us so i can send you an invite because it's an exclusive event it's a limited event we have very specific parking needs to be met and once the last invite is out that is it so we'll have people out there kind of telling you where to park and everything. But once we're loaded up, like, we can't take any more. No bummers. Yeah, guys. No and, like, bummers. when we say exclusive event, this event is going to be amazing. Tell us some of the things we're going to have with this. We're going to have comedy. We're going to have live music. All of the top above. of the skateboarding. Yeah, pretty much it's like uh, two half pipes that are kind of conjoined together with a jump box in the middle. And then there's a little stage off in the back where we'll have badass bands playing all day long. And then at about 5.45-ish, the bands will stop playing, and we'll switch right into a sick comedy show where we got Nicola Burkett headlining. Hell yeah. It sounds like it's going to be a really hardcore event. Hardcore. Oh. It's gonna sound, it sounds really punk. Yeah, it's pretty punk, dude. We got a bunch of punk bands. We got um, two returning champions, Plastic Songs, which... On the hardcore note, they call themselves post-hardcore, but I would say they're a lot more than that. It's hard to describe it in one genre word. And then uh, we got Diet Riot coming back, which they're like white trash, punk rock, fucking awesomeness. And um, then, of course, we got three new bands coming. So starting off the day, we're going to have Always Last, which they're calling themselves like an emo band, but once again, they're like a lot more than that. You could say Midwest emo or something, but a lot more jamming than just that word. 
Um, and then following that up, we got this band called Flashpoint, which if you look at their Instagram is power violence, two minute long songs, extreme genre of hardcore. Hardcore. And then of course, for the first time ever in the public eye, we've got Bush Era, which is Nicolo and I's band. And yep. it's also going to be doubling as a single release party for us. Yep. Nice. Nice. This is going to be awesome. Guys. Yeah. I'm excited to hear Bush Era. It's going to be sick. Yeah, yeah we've been, we've been working, working hard. hard on it for sure. Uh, the logo was dope. I love I love everything uh, you guys have been doing with the marketing yes. and everything about it. I don't know Thank who did you. the logo, so I can't shout it uh, out. One of, uh, one of the guitarists, Ale or the guitarist Alex's. Yeah, nice. he Alex's brought the friend. heat with that one. We got a couple different ones, and they look sick. When we talked about before we started shooting, like, you know, game recognizes game. Like, you know, like, I've been doing a lot of visual shit and like that. So, like, when I see the logo and I'm like, damn, that sticks out. Like, yeah. Like, that's like, what we're yeah. looking for. You for know what sure. I mean? And the same thing with, like, your marketing behind this show, even. Like, just like, it's fucking amazing how you guys have been doing this, how you've been doing this as far as, like, the exclusive event, like, the flyer, you know, hint, hint. I um, know, right? <laughs> I would say. Flyer's dope. All, yeah, the flyer's yeah. dope. All the graphic work, all the flyers were done by. Jared over here, honestly, killer, killer. Oh, does killer. all my graphic work for anything I ever need, and it always comes out great. That's what I like about working with you is that I'm able to send you the idea, spit it out of my brain, and then nine times out of ten, within 30 minutes, you're spitting me back like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? It doesn't feel like uh, uncomfortable to say, like, oh, change this or change that. Nine times out of ten, you're fucking dead on. If anything, it's like information we got to fix or something. Well, like, for those that don't know, I do a lot of graphic design and stuff like that with the production company that I'm trying to build up behind this. But, like, for both of you guys, it's like, you know, just quote-unquote clients or friends, you know, asking for favors and stuff like that, you know, getting help and stuff like that. The best thing I love about it is you guys have both kind of have been like just do your kind of thing yeah just put your you know you're like yeah, you're just like it. you don't like tell me do it like this exactly like this like this is like this you're just like i need like all this information just do your thing yeah and trusting you yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but you also like the creativity because like it's got like the brand image you've got like i mean you know what i like i feel like so yeah. far since we've worked together like you know what colors i like you know kind of like if i want it you know like we talked about the ram jam and we went through a couple iterations, but it was pretty much dead on from the first try. Yeah, because I was just like, my idea was like trying to get you a sticker, like just trying to make you a logo to where it can be on a brand, on a T-shirt, right. something where it's like right away, oh, that's Ram, that's Ram Jam. That's We're going to actually make yeah. buttons for this event where the staff and all the artists that have gotten to perform on it are going to get a little Ramp Jam button that says artist or staff or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that'll be fun with that little round logo you sent me in the first place. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. Nice big, like three inch button, a little commemorative to take with you afterwards. It's going to be fucking dope. And then you can sit it, you can spot it from a mile away as we're at the event. It'll just say staff or whatever, you know, or event. Right. Right? It's like, yeah, with those colors. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of the pink and teal in general. I told him, I was like, when I finally got done, I was like, what did I say my original vision was? Like like an acid trip Simpsons like episode or something right, like that? Like, right. That's, like, that's the good. colors, like what I wanted for it. Like, I like that. That's something like, to stand out. What is what is this uh what is this color layout? Acid Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah, that's L dope. Like if Bart did like a fear and loathing. <laughs> right. I could see that. Fear and loathing in Springfield. I yeah. get it. Nice. Nice. I like that. No, dude, you were really good at it. That's why I, that's why I didn't try to even like try to limit your creativity or something. Yeah, I knew dude. you would do some throw down something. Well, I appreciate dope, it, man. It's you know? like and like we talked off camera about like, you know, everybody can like hop on to a Canva account or something like that. And you know, it's like I'll be completely transparent with you. I am not a snob when it comes to people like, oh, I have to use Adobe Premiere Pro. I have to do Photoshop and stuff like that. I did your shit like probably seventy five percent of the end of it in Canva. That's fine. I can I use tools like that because it's like it's not about what tools you use; it's how you use them. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you don't know how to use the tools, then, you, then you're not making anything. Well, not only that, but like you talked about, like uh, off camera, there was somebody that said, like was balking at you using Audacity. Right, right. It's a quality program that's free. Why would you be an asshole? Why to not would use, you? Like, pay it just works. For something yeah, exactly. that does the same thing. Rich people stay rich because they don't act like poor people. Um, dude. I'll give you guys a fucking tip, and this is a fucking master. I almost put this on Facebook. Um, not that I'm a snob when it comes to flyers or anything. Like that. You know, I, I'm, I know what I'm doing and stuff like, uh, stuff like that. Boomer there's book. A, there's a free website called remove.bg. Put any photo in there, and it just removes the background with one click. So nice. if you want to do a, a headshot or you want to do anything and put a per person on a fucking flyer, you just go to the website, hit one button, and boom, the background's just done. Nice. And it's free. 
It's just a free website, and it makes every single one of your flyers a hundred times better. There's nothing wrong with using the right tool for the job. Yeah, it's just like you just put a little bit of quality to some time into it, some effort into it. You know, do a Google search once in a while. Yeah, know how to use know how to use the tool. Yeah, yeah. It's like when I see your fucking Instagram, man, and your fucking clips coming out. Like you can you stand out because you can see the effort into it. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. But not but there's a lot like, of editing. Yeah, be like <laughs> you know, you know. But yeah. it helps shine and show the fucking talent, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and learning how to use those tools and like like, and getting over the like those uh, learning curves and stuff like that. That's yeah. what really is important. Well, I mean, there's a reason you're the fucking headliner of the show, man. I mean, like if you guys haven't seen Akala live, you're in for a fucking treat this Saturday, man. Banger, the- especially at odd events like this where there's multiple things going on. Well, dude, you yeah. have an energy about yourself. Like you just have this charisma and this energy that you bring up. Uh, I always remember the first time or more like the second time I saw you was a hunt club, and like as you went up, you just started doing this fucking roll. He just oh, rolled yeah. on the ground. He just oh, decided, yeah. like, walk and walk and barrel roll, and then walked up on the stage and just started doing your set. And just didn't have to do it. You just did it randomly. I'm like, what the fuck? Some, like, Willy Wonka stuff. Like yeah. that. That's what I was thinking. But, uh, yeah, sometimes, so, well, sometimes at those shows, there's, like, people just need some energy. You yeah. know what I mean? So they got to wake up. Mm-hmm. But it matches, like, what I'm getting back to is, like, whenever I see, like, your Instagram reels and stuff like that, like, the way you put your animations and, like, your editing and stuff like that, it matches your energy. And so it makes it. And it not only embellishes it, but it, like it enhances it. You know what I mean? Like nice. it, it works together. Yeah. I th- I feel you. I so feel you like when that. you Thank see you. that work together, it's like peanut butter and jelly, man. Yeah, nice, cool. No, dude. I mean, just like you said, talent respects talent. That's yeah. why I didn't try to even ta- tell you anything to do. I knew you that you would knock it out of the park, and you did. Well, yeah. yeah. We, we talk about fucking stand up all the time, and then there's like little things that are, like psychology wise that like stick out. We don't know why, but it just works. Like how many you can instantly tell when somebody's new when they don't move the mic stand. Yeah, right, right. yeah, that always always does irk me. That's one thing. You is can like, watch a YouTube video. Yeah, but you, but a lot of people like the audience. If it's just a random audience, they don't know why it bothers them. Yeah, it's like a little little subtle hint of just telling you like I'm commanding the show right now. Yeah, it, it, you're fighting for attention. Yep. Yeah. And subconsciously, the audience is like, huh, 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 huh. And it's that what's that thing? Um, Chekhov's gun. Have you ever heard that literary term? Negative. Uh-huh. And dumb. The basically the the, pro, the thing is like if you inter- introduce something, if like. We're doing a Harry Potter story or just some kind of fucking story. And I say, hey, there's this monster sugar, zero sugar energy came next to Harry. And I made a pretty prominent point to point that out in the story. The audience's expectation is somewhere else in that story. That's going to come into the plot. Right, right. And if it doesn't happen, you're let down because you're Uh. expecting it. So subconsciously, if you put the mic stand next to the, the person and you're intentionally putting that out there as part of your set and you don't use it, subconsciously the audience is like, well, you didn't do it right. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it is a weird like subconscious thing. It's weird, right? Yeah, it's the psychology no. of all this shit. I mean, yeah, no, it, no, it it is one thing. It's like at first you can be like that doesn't matter, but then it's like no, you're commanding the stage. Yeah, you know what I mean. You get it's it like, out the way, yeah. unless you like you're gonna use it. Yeah, which I mean, even just holding on to it or doing something with it is using. Well, it. when you're like, yeah, when you're like, uh, you know, repositioning the mic, that shows that you have control. Yeah, right. You know. And like, uh, you're owning the space. Yeah. I mean, think about the times you've seen people that have like, even, even experienced comments have problems with the mic. It makes, makes, it gives you a little like that weirder setting kind of uncomfortableness. It's like, Oh, is everything going to be okay? Yeah. You know, but when you see someone pick it up and pull it out, they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Subconsciously. That's a good word for yeah, it. Man. You know? Yeah. And I feel like we're dealing with a lot of wireless mics lately yeah. where they're always going to click out at some weird time or whatever. And you just got to know to keep talking, wiggle it around a little bit, do what you got to do, but just keep it going. Like, the more you stop and look at it and let that dead air flow is like, you know, it's not your fault. It's the venue's fault or whoever is doing the thing. It's technical bullshit, but... Well, hell, all the shows we've done it, through it. All the shows we've done at Session have actually kind of helped because everybody's usually high, so that delay that you kind of build in just naturally because oh, you're waiting for that laugh. And that's it's a like, tough room. High crowds, dude. Yeah, very tough room. I've I've seen tons. <laughs> it builds of people. you up though a little bit better though, in my opinion. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. It's easy to kill in like front of like your, like it's easy to kill like with your friends alone high, but like when you have like a legitimately stone crowd that are smoking. To watch a comedy show. They're all looking at each other like, am I supposed to laugh at this? Are yeah. they laughing? And then nobody's laughing because they're looking at each other like, oh, they're not laughing. It's not- oh, they're just, in, it's just get, they're just like, wait, in their why are we here again? Right. Well, like, well, like two weeks ago, I won the, I got second place from uh, the fucking open mic. Katie Style got first. I got second. And I don't, I was like, I don't even think I did that great. But the thing that I did is the first thing I went up, I was like, wake up! Yeah. I was just like, wake up! Yeah. And everyone kind of shook up and I was like, oh, did I wake you guys up now? And like, I guess that, 
made it stand out. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the crowd likes to be talked to. Yeah, right. you know, they want. That's how you get the interaction. Yeah, not just by yeah. Yeah, Keep it fun. Or we're there for fun. Dude, yeah. So many people I know won't come over there because they either went once and they had what they consider a bad experience, or there was one time where this dude was acting a fool there, and I didn't know this until recently, but a bunch of people have not come back since then because of that guy. What I was going to get into, though, is that I think it's a cop-out for these people not to come because it is a harder crowd. And yeah. they're used to their little friend bubble of like, <laughs> my bro Chad's up there, dude. Fuck yeah, bro Chad, dude. Well, it's like you know the personal shit that I've gone through with like the the the, the kid things. Like I've had to step away from like, like yeah, all the mics I'm doing lately. Like since July, I haven't seen my well, daughter. I went like, out to some different oh, mics man. that I don't yeah. go to recently, and I've seen some different people there, and I had some interactions, and I'm just like, you know, everybody stays in their little comfort bubble, which is fine. Yeah. But like Nicola, bro, he fucking rips all the mics, dude. Uh, trash hits most of them, but one or whatever. But like when you're just doing one. And it's the same one. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to be judgmental, but people like get in their little fucking clicks and it's like, dude, you're not working. You're just playing. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm not trying to have an ego about this or anything like that. It's just more like I'm not in it to be at a social club. Right. I'm yeah. in it to well, it's an individual do sport. the rep and I'm actually here to do the work. I was like, this is not trash a hobby for the me. other day, yeah, dude. Yeah, like, gotta the, get those reps in. Yeah. At the end of the day, no matter how much we all love each other and we have our little friend groups and stuff, it is an individual sport. Yes. I like to think of it as a little bit more of a team mentality because if we were going on the road or we're doing bigger things, like we can support each other in certain ways. But there are people that work at the top highest level that come hang out. They'd be nice. They'd be friendly. But then when it's time to go to work, they go to work for themselves. They're not there to work for yeah. you, you know? Well, and there's just there's just two different crowds. And I'm not saying one's better than the other or anything like that. It's just there's some people that come in here and it's more like, hey, I'm off work. This is my time to do my hobby. Right, right. And the social club, I'm going to get a beer after work and we're going to do some jokes. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. No. I'm not blaming that. That's not me. Me is, I got to do my work. This is work for me. This is me doing the, the open mic as a gym. Right. I'm trying out my new material. It might not land or shit, but I'm like, I actually wrote it and yeah, I'm working on it. Going out and trying your shit, not just like getting shit faced and forgetting it. Like, or just trying to make your friends laugh. Well, not only that, but yeah, that's a good point. That's the, that's the big thing is like, because like, yeah, if you can make your friends laugh, that's good. Yeah. But then if you're like not only performing for your friends and that's like not even like well, let me ask you guys, it, let down whenever you go to a real crowd and you're like oh i thought it was funny well not only that but it's just like i don't know you guys drove here to bartlesville for this like i drive every week to those open mics like i have to put that gas and that effort in there so i'm not gonna waste it right yeah you yeah. know what i mean like i'm not just gonna like, go there and just like oh i'm just not gonna do it tonight no that gives you a different mindset of having to drive that far because you're like okay this is what i'm going to do yeah it has to be right. worth it yeah. for me yeah uh, Where some people they they have it like I live really close to it, but like you know, that makes me like okay now now I'm closer to what I'm really trying to do. Yeah, like case in point, like uh, I use this as an it's coming up next week, but like this happened a couple months ago. Like there was a show at Baby Roost with Andrew Live, and like he does like the the bands, and then they have like an open I'm mic after like that. Him, yeah. yeah. Um, Mama Sue's. Uh, it's, it's, it's the Baby Roost at the bar, the bar. Okay, and they. <laughs> Asked to do have some comedians out there. I didn't know it was like an open mic thing that Roscoe was doing, and it was just like an open mic, basically do a couple minutes out there. So I went out there, and I'm like, on the way there, I'm like, man, I'm driving all the way to fucking Broken Arrow basically for an open mic. Is this fucking worth it? Like, it's like to go like an hour or something, like for fucking maybe five minutes, ten minutes, not getting paid or anything like that. And I'm kind of mm -hmm. having these doubts. Go there, end up doing probably fourteen. Just you know, I, I, he said go over ten. As long as you do over ten, it's fine. I think I did like fourteen. So good. I, I was just winging shit. It was so funny, I guess, that I, I opened up the bar that I got booked for this upcoming Friday for the birthday gig for the owners of the show. Nice. nice. And they want me to bring the exact set back, and they already pre-planned that, and they were already going to plan it and pay me for it. There you go. Like, nice. just from that, I'm like, okay, hey, well, that made it That's worth up. it. Close, yeah. Close mouths don't get fed, dude. Yeah. And and sometimes just, there's you got to be at the trough to eat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Be, <laughs> we gotta be at the oh my this where did you come up with that dude i'm just saying if everybody's eating and you're sitting at the house wondering how good it is over there but you're talking never gonna about be it like a trough dude <laughs> <All> like, 
<laughs> That's what an open mic is, dude. Everybody. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna put in that gif from Son in Law where Crawl is oh, fucking like, like doing the rollerblades with the fucking feed yes. down the fucking troughs. Everybody's <laughs> like, oh, let me get mine. Blah, 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 blah. So is this good. some more? Is no. this some more for me? Nom, 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 nom. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. Once you I'm show gonna up, go down to Taco Bell and give me a <laughs> blah, blast. <laughs> exactly. Everyone's getting theirs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're not, dude, that's the whole thing. It's like, I'm talking about these other fucking dudes, man. Yeah. They are in this bubble. They're bubbling it up. I see them on flyers and stuff. More power to you or whatever. But I'm telling <laughs> you, when you go to a hard show, don't look around at your peers. It's like, why didn't that go well? It's because you didn't fucking practice anywhere else but your fucking comfort zone. Well, it's like we talked. Success talk is not found in comfort, dude. Well, we talked off camera about a podcast that didn't, like, I guess, I mean, we're not going to get any names or any specifics or anything, but we talked about a podcast that wasn't going on anymore, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how, like, you guys had a different mindset of, like, the timetables and the priority list, stuff like that. Yeah, know, so how much work it goes into really making it happen. Yeah, it's more than just hitting camera action and then, like, oh, magically it's on YouTube and making views. Right. Like, please subscribe. Um, anyway, <laughs> please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, guys. Help this fat ass remain fat. Um, diabetes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, there's more work into that. You know, the magic of editing, you right. know, changing the all that stuff. The front end is not all it is, dude. There's a whole amount of back end. It's yeah. like where he all shines with the fun, videos, dude. dude. All that fun, dude. All that shine. Yeah, it was overwhelming to me as well. Like, I knew it was going to be hard, but then when I was actually doing it, it was like, okay, this is like still a little out of my depth you know when i was editing videos before like two years ago i was like figuring it out on the fly and something that would take me like two days to do i inevitably figured out only takes three minutes yeah but it took me those two days at first to figure it the fuck out yeah and there's nobody that's really like telling you this stuff you can youtube it all day long or whatever but you still have to like stumble through it the best learning method i've heard when i was reading about like ableton the recording software it was saying just get your free sample going, get your free trial going, pull up a song that you like, and then try to recreate the song. And every time you come across a problem you don't understand, then Google it or chase down that answer. Yeah. And then that's like a good way to get through what do I need to learn, you know? Well, like, uh, I'm sure, you know, you guys are very music based. Tom Morello is one of my favorite guys yeah. in the history of music. Yep. Um, if you ever listen to his. <laughs> Damn it. If you ever listen to his breakdowns of like his uh like theory, like his music theory and shit, like he had YouTube videos of like how he thought of songs and how he thinks of guitar yeah. work, it's very fascinating. Cause and I kind of think of that of, and I kind of take his lessons and I use them to like video editing and podcasts and even fucking comedy, just anything in life. Right. It's a way to think about something. His ideas was basically like, okay, this is a guitar, it's got buttons, it's got strings. I'm not reinventing the wheel. All I'm doing is looking at this thing and be like, okay. Traditionally, it's been played like this. I don't need to think like that. I'm just going to make something cool. And when you're not adhered, to it, it has to be traditionally like this. You have to do it this way. It opens up so many more possibilities. And he's talking about how he just wanted to recreate hip hop from like uh, Grandmaster Flash and like fucking like Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and those funky hip hop like West Coast songs. And he recreated that by just messing around with beats on his guitar and just right. fucking messing around with pedals rhythm, and shit. Looking at it as a rhythm machine rather yeah. than a melody machine. Yeah, and once I started listening to his like philosophy of how he started looking at everything kind of like that, fucking look at Canva, look at anything on those tools. They're just tools, and it's just mm -hmm. how you use them. Use right. them in a creative way, and you can turn something into something amazing just by yep. using a different, you know perspective on it. This yeah. dude's a songwriting master, dude. He might not think of himself as that, but... I've come a long way in my playing yeah. just since I've met him and our other bandmates. It's like I was always very stuck in like my certain style or like same notes, same riffs or whatever. And I've been carrying around since I was 14. Still similar stuff, gotten better, still stuck in certain things. But it takes like being around people that actually know how to build a song yeah. to be like, okay, well that sounds cool, but now try it like this yeah, or, you know, change the rhythm or, okay, well this is one part and now this is another part. We're going to do this two times and then do this one time. Like that's like a whole different way of thinking, producing if you will, but it is just songwriting. And you know, like I had the playing skill, but I didn't have like the production skill or the writing. The, be the best visual example. Have you guys ever seen the fucking Lego movie? 
Oh, I probably have skimmed with Chris across Pratt. It. Yeah, no, I've not seen. Okay, it. I've seen there's, a bit of there's it. There's a thing where like, so he's like the chosen fucking Lego character that basically is like the fucking Neo of the Matrix kind of uh -huh. thing. Okay, even the make it's a it's a mock off of the the Neo Matrix thing. You remember when he like suddenly sees the Matrix and it's all the green and yeah. like he can see the code and it's like, oh my god, he's seeing it, and you're seeing he's seeing the actual Matrix uh -huh. kind of thing. And he can do all the pieces, and he's like predicting all the moves and stuff like that. In the Lego movie, he gets Chris Pratt's character goes to this whole movie being the dumbass, and then you find out he's the special, and he sees basically the blueprints for how to build anything in the Lego universe just by looking at the images. And it does this quick little thing of like he sees the pieces, he's like, oh, and he puts them together. Uh huh. Once you start kind of training in like music or video editing and stuff like that, everything just starts to start kind of start seeming like a puzzle. Yes. Right. Yeah, and you just kind of in your mind, you be like, okay, I take that piece, that piece, that piece, clip. And you can just kind of visualize like that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how you kind of just make, you kind of work your I got world. a funny story about that. Go Have ahead. you guys ever tried salvia before? No. <laughs> yeah. So I don't recommend it. Full disclosure, don't try salvia what? if you've never you tried it. You turn into a puzzle piece. What's well, salvia? it was like that. It was like. What uh, is salvia? Salvia is like. I thought that was like uh, the mattress company that Tom Segura You can buy them. it. You can buy it. At, Sal Sal you can, Sal 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 please sponsor me. You, you can still cop it at Lowe's right now. It comes in a pot ready to be planted in these nice, beautiful red leaves. I was but, like, Lowe's has little Yeah, the Lowe's baggies. got the salvia on deck, dude. But uh, it's salvium divinorum. It's something like that. Devorum? Devorum. Devorum, yep. That's the better way to say it. And uh, basically, no, it what? was no. around that realm of like legal drugs that were coming out in the mid two thousands, right? You smoke it, and it would make you trip. But those of us that have tried it, and most people that dealt with it, know that it's like one of the most horrifically violent, fucking crazy trips you could ever yeah, it's have. Not a fun trip, it's dude. not fun. And then I kept watching these YouTube videos of like the guy that owned the company, and he looked like Fabio, and he's like. There's 3X, 4X, 5X, 10X, and that's like the potency level of it. And they're talking about Yikes. you just got to do a little bit and then meditate and <laughs> get up on this level. It's the fucking Scoville fucking Carolina Reaper. Right, Pretty right. Much. So yeah, every time much. I would rip it, I'd just be like, oh, we just did too much. We got to try it again and do a little less. Just did too much. Dude. Right, but it was like, and then I was like, I'm never doing it again, fucking swearing off of it. And then I'd be at a party and I'd be drunk and some chick would be like, oh, Dylan will do it. He fucking loves his shit. So it's what serious. I was getting at is this one time I did And some, it's still available at Lowe's? No, I mean, well, it is. Yes, it's a garden yes. plant. Yeah, you can you plant can, in your garden. Landscapers love the, it. It's Christmas time. You can get the time. bulk version. At, right. at, at, no, I'm just kidding. You, you can, can the rip the leaves version. up and just take a dip of it. So it's Lowe's or a home grow depot? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Home oh. grow depot. So, I've been waiting three minutes for you to shut the fuck up so I can do that pun. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> magic editing, I'm a genius. Um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, essentially... <laughs> Oh my god! I was way, looking like I at the universe, <laughs> and I could see like in all matter and everything that was around us. It was all little tiny people interlocking arms to make up the object. So you it'd know, be just like a dude, million little people. Dude, that is actually uh, that's so funny that you had a trip like that because my friend he said that there was all these little elves holding up the world. Right, they were all interlocked arms, and so look, they started looking at each other saying, he can see us. That's oh, what, he's that's not he supposed too, to see dude. us like this, dude. He's at not one, supposed to see this. And at then, one point, you just get scared of little people. Bro, dude, the tiniest <laughs> ones, man. Especially when you shake their hands and their fingers are shorter than yours. The pastry hands. <laughs> So essentially the closure of this event was that I had to shrink down and get in interlocking arms with these people. <laughs> and then once I was a part of the thing, everything exploded back to me sitting on the couch. Like, all right, we're normal again. We're back. He's that back. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> it was so horrible. And you're just sitting there like, is this going to, I always have these horrible fears while tripping of like, if, I never come back from this, and my mom's going to have to wipe my ass in the hospital for the rest of my life or something. Is this what I'm saying? Right. And then I, you'd ask your friends, like, what did I do? Was I running around? They're like, no, bro, you just leaned over and drooled for the last seven minutes or whatever. Do you guys know who, uh, do you guys know who Stephen Lynch is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He has this song called Is This Outer Space? Highly recommend listening to it. And it's just him singing, like, is this outer space? And he's just doing this nice acoustic song. And you find out through the lyrics that he just did acid and he's in the fucking mall at a fucking arcade. <laughs> and he's just tripping fucking balls. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the, it, it, it'd be like that. 
the salvia. <laughs> be like that, dude. I'm telling you, if you've been on DMT or anything like that, like there's so many better drugs than salvia. So don't, if you just ever get presented with the opportunity, just be like, nah, dude, I'll I'm, get a DMT vape from my friend in Austin. I mean, with my with my depression, and anxiety, and shit, I really have looked into like doing the ayahuasca eventually. Like, I mean, that stuff is like great, that. but it's very that much, stuff, you know. You know, I would say do it in a responsibly controlled manner. It's not the trip that gets you. It's the come down. And especially with young people, they always come down and they think they fucking know everything. And they're not like completely like decompressing off the trip. So then they can get into that mindset of nihilism where they just think everything is worth nothing. And they just don't do anything, but then trip every other weekend for the next two years. <laughs> And you're like, bro, like, like this is what you should do, dude. Right. Like go sell some hemp bracelets at the fucking Papadocio <laughs> show or something, dude. Be productive. Yeah, go to Humphreys McGee, man. And, right. Grilled cheese is in the yeah, lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just jam I, I got a good joke about that, dude. I'm working on these Wook jokes. I found out the other night at the hunt club that there's two different definitions of wooks oh yeah i forgot you told me about yeah that. it was so funny like these chicks were back there laughing at all my shit and i'm like hell yes finally at least there's two people in here that get it <laughs> you're like you're like these are some these people are wooks these people go to festivals well i could tell it was like these people are like wook adjacent or like their boyfriends were wook wooks adjacent. they've dated wook wooks adjacent. In the past. what an <laughs> amazing word and together. then so the chick comes up and does the comedy and <laughs> ramps giving wook adjacent right <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for not remembering her name. She's new. She probably doesn't even want to be shouted out yet. But I don't even know who it is. Um, she was like saying she was in the Marine Corps. What's her name? Uh, honestly, <laughs> yeah, so. that's what it was. Um, and she was basically saying, like, I was in the army, so we have our own terminology. But she was saying she used to be a wook. And basically, a wook in the army we would call a gun bunny, but it's like just a chick in the <laughs> barracks who's like down to fuck. So like, if you're a married guy and you're like going gun to the bunny, barracks to hang out with your buddy, like you just see two dudes leaving a barracks room and then two dudes going in it and shit, and it's like a gun bunny. I just yeah. like that. It's like I got a couple gun bunnies on my. <laughs> Wook adjacent and gun bunnies. Yeah, yeah. So she Wook was, adjacent gun bunnies. The Wook name of the episode. Yeah, that's a good. I'm still trying to figure that's a good out porn search yeah. now if the one chick who was with her was laughing about my definition of wooks or if they were both just like wrongly laughing about me saying wook shit as if it was like this female. What if that wook shit was the similar? I mean, that it kind is of shit. the same type of shit. It's like <laughs> all I'm thinking is the next next ramp jam is gonna have the following bands: <laughs> wook adjacent, wook adja and and gun, ramp, bunnies. gun bunnies, gun bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that'd the, be hilarious if like just two new groups came out of that. And Brenda, formerly of Gun Bunnies. <laughs> I would be totally happy if some Wooks came out to the ranch. And, would they be called Wookies? But well, they call the little ones Ewoks. Oh, uh, Wook Jam. Yeah. Hey, as a Star Wars fan, you're starting to fucking mix with my shit, okay? I'm it's, telling Wookies you, dude, are not that's, from fucking Indoor, bitch. Well, that's the point. Dude. They're from Kashyyyk. It's okay. An, it's an inside. <laughs> it's a different joke. forest. They're two different species, but you evolve once you get past like 16 out there on the road, dude. And after oh. a couple of cold grilled cheeses, dude. Oh, speaking of Star Wars, it, <clears throat> there was like an explanation of how they beat them. How they beat who? The Imperial forces? <clears throat> yeah. Let's hear it. Do you know this? It's because it's like uh, they've been the, like the the Empire has been there for years and years and years. Like they didn't just build all that stuff in like a day. Yeah. So it's like years, and so like there's a shadow a shadow like council kind of shit. Like it was being built up in the background. Exactly. Yeah. So all the like people that were native to that that were watching them for all these years and figured out what their weakness is. Yeah. And, and I was like. I mean, that was just some high shit. I was like, oh, that <laughs> well, makes sense. The, the Imperials are based basically like the Nazis, kind of yeah, like yeah, the, the, yeah. the thing. And like, if you even go through like fucking history of the world, the thing that led up to Germany and the Nazi power was not just Hitler. It was the things that led up to it. And the way that the world was coming and forming and the way that this, led, you know, the chess moves. Propaganda. Propaganda. But I'm just saying like the world was in this part of the world, the, the right, not the right time, the, you know, I'm not saying it's the right time for any fucking genocide. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to say is yeah. like, uh, <laughs> I backed into that. Yeah, oh. yeah, I was like, well, I can't help you out there. Dude. <laughs> what I'm saying is like, it was like. It wasn't just one thing. It was like that was the catalyst, but like or the thing that you know eventually set off. But it was like yeah. it was a a melting pot. There was a storm of things that were going to happen. 
uh-huh. is what I'm trying to say. It wasn't just one thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, there was always, I just, like, the people were, like, could never believe that the Ewoks beat the Empire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they yeah. were about it. They were, like, the natives fighting the fucking Texas Rangers, dude. Yeah, I backed into that fucking anti civilism so bad, I forgot I was talking about Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, that is a huge, like, were we talking about the war just now? That wasn't kosher. <laughs> oh, um, my gosh. Star Wars isn't kosher. Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this took a he- anyway. Come to Ram Jam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Wook thing that I was talking I about. <laughs> I hope people haven't been <laughs> conflating it because I might have been posting some confusing stories. Conflating but, and confusing. <laughs> right. I'm like, uh, I'm doing this Friendsgiving show on Saturday, which will probably have already happened by the time this airs. But yes. that's yeah, the you're... actual Wook thing. <laughs> and so, so to clarify, no so Wooks will be at Ramp Jam. <laughs> potentially not, but I'm saying they're welcome. If you want to come peddle your wares, dude, if you got cold grilled cheeses for us, <laughs> you got hemp bracelets and glass no pendants. Wooks even, they, they longboard. Yeah, they're about it. They, they're about it, dude. They're I've about that comfortable wookie, boarding. Some Wook skaters, dude. That, that's what they, they pretty much stole their styles so, from. Right. So for my audience, would you go ahead and define Wook? Okay, so a Wook in the context I'm talking about is at the base level, somebody that listens to a lot of jam bands, somebody that potentially travels to follow these bands at festivals or at their shows. Um, they could be... Wook adjacent, which would be just somebody that happens to travel in a van or hitchhikes or whatever. They use Ben as Jerry's lube. They wear like like ten year old car hearts. That was a Grateful Dead reference. That's say it what, again. I, I was, I, I say it again. I forgot. I was, they ben use Ben and, and Jerry's cherry. as lube. Yes. Cherry yes. Garcia. That's okay. that's. Yeah. Yeah. That's they a, are the new generation hippies. So yeah. there's kind of like a yuppie wook, which would be more into that fucking Ben and Jerry's level. It's even level. past the fish. Like they're six dollars a quart, dude. You know, in the nineties it would be like what fish and Dave. Yes, Matthews? yes. I yeah. hate saying it so much because there's so many better bands out there now. But when I'm talking to normies about it, I always say, you know, like fish. But if I were Dave to Matthew shout out to my wooks the- out there, Papadocios probably like my top fave. Overall, at the moment, the Disco Biscuits are what really got me into it, circa 2008. And right now, here in the Tulsa area, we got Dr. Junior. And, man, they do fucking kill it. Like it's, They're a cool band. They're super nice dudes, but they're it's also super cool talented. Name. Yeah, they call their fans the Patience, dude. So <laughs> if you're in the fandom, you get a patient, you got to come see the doc. Do they cover the song from Guns N' Roses? No, no. They just do... <laughs> <laughs> Two hour long laser shows with crazy uh, projections and whatnot. So like they did the turp float. I uh, first saw them at Harvest Fest. I didn't know if you had to have a lot of patience for the encore. Yeah, they're gonna. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Or you gotta be tripping on mushrooms. And I don't Just mean. A I don't mean any offense to it, but I, I'm telling some of my anyway. friends like, I don't want you to come because <laughs> that's afraid. <laughs> do not say that. Stop where you're going. <laughs> I'm just like I don't want to babysit you when I'm already trying to babysit myself. I just so like that clip of I don't want you to come the yeah. Pornhub theme. I gotta work. <laughs> I gotta do my set, and I'm gonna come prepared, and I'm gonna kill it, and I'm gonna do my best. But then once I'm done, I'm gonna eat a bag of mushrooms and snort some ketamine, dude. <laughs> I just gotta say, you look like you're dressed as like the Russian knockoff of fucking minions. I got a good joke about this. Pair of overalls, dude. Dude, you're like Acid Mario, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Waluigi. <laughs> oh, boy. No, that's Mario. Oh, that's fucking Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong impression. <laughs> Did you know it's a me is like a Japanese word? And it's he a was me, never, Mario. yeah, he was never saying like it's me. It was like a thing in, in Japanese. Jap- in Japanese, yeah. it's something in Japan that's like, it's a me. Yeah, forgive me for forgetting what it's actually supposed to mean, but that's what he was always saying. But then it's they just me. added his name at the end of it. Well, it's like if you Google it's a me appropriation. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, they were Japanese until we started liking it. Yeah, it was Jumpman back in the day, and then they're Italian. Yeah, it was an Italian plumber because we had like they brought it over to America, and they're like, "Oh, we don't understand this shit." They're like, "Who can we make fun?" Of? <laughs> this pixel is not peach. It's tan, or Dude, not tan. John, it's peach. John Linguizamo. It's just like Jesus. He's clearly white. He's a white. G. He's a white boy. <laughs> Mario and Jesus, both white guys. They're totally white. Oh, do you know about white Jesus? 
I know about black Jesus on dude, Adult Swim. Let me <laughs> tell you that. about white that. Jesus. Is that a new drug, dude? <laughs> no, he was um, Leonardo da Vinci's boyfriend. <sighs> Whoa. Whoa, We're revelations. About a lot, dude. We're talking about Renaissance. Man. Yeah, dude, white Jesus. Was this like a Liberace thing? He was the son of the Pope. Did he, gro- did he groom somebody? He killed a guy oh. and his sister, I think. His brother and Leonardo his sister. Leonardo? No, 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 the gay Michelangelo? boyfriend. The, the <laughs> Donatello? Da or Vinci Raphael. was the guy who oh, was dating the dude. Da, Vin- da-, da Vinci. Oh, the yeah. The dude Vinci. was the sons of the Pope. The Pope was like, hey, we got to get rid of this black Jesus. So he went on this whole tear around the world of like taking down any other Jesus that wasn't, and he used his son's face to be the new white Jesus. So when you're around at regular Southern Baptist churches and whatnot, and you see white Jesus on the wall, that's Da Vinci's boyfriend. That's Da Vinci's boyfriend. Wow! Dude, and he Jesus killed his got brother a lot and his cooler, sister. Dude. Right? Yeah, exactly. I, my favorite meme include that church. I still always laugh at that old old meme of like uh, nobody correcting the old like uh, Spanish grandmother that has a picture of Obi Wan Kenobi up on the wall. <laughs> yep, yep. That's a that's a great that's a great meme. Dude, that's you know meme. I used to buy these candles all the time, and then somebody was at my house and was like, "Do you know it's like it's like bad luck if you like light the candles but you don't really believe in it." And I'm like, was that a Hispanic person? Telling no, me? she was actually a white person <laughs> being offended on a behalf of a Hispanic person. I was like, that, that speaking from Hispanics, I'm that's like, somebody messing with you. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, how do you know I don't believe it, dude? I yes. lit the candles. Come on now. It's like I lit the I lit the black flame candle, dude. I'm still a virgin. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the fucking candle that got lit and it's going to take the Green Ranger's power. There's this... Uh, <laughs> oh! Uh, uh, uh. There's we this movie I Can I, I show you the nerdiest thing I have? Yeah, so Let's see it. it. You, you guys have watched Power Rangers, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys remember Finster, the dude that would make the things out of clay? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The so, putties. They made, what? They finally made a figure of this dude. What? Look at the detail on him. Holy snap. But he comes... With the putty... He comes with a little briefcase nice. and you open it up and it has the actual oh play putty. Oh, that's cool. That is crazy. That's badass. Like, you can see Dude, that's the- an integral part of the intro to the episode. Yeah. Like, when they're like spitting them out of the little yep. machine and boop, yep. boop, 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 boop. That yeah. is so much detail on it. Yeah. Little and it's like a little $20 birds. figure. Like, that's cool. Dude, it's dope. I totally, I totally am like surprised at how detailed that is yeah it just brought memories flashing back we talked about like what things inspire you and stuff like that and like power rangers the story behind you guys know the story like how i got in, like in, came in over to fucking like us like vaguely, vaguely like vaguely I, I think so it was a, a show in the 70s and 80s like called super sentai in japan uh-huh. and all they did was they took a show that had already been aired in japan like five years earlier and a guy named Saban who went over there was like, oh, this is a fucking cool show. Just got the rights and just took the footage, brought it over to the U.S. and just did a little bit of it. overdubbed it, got a theme song and that's it. And then just put a little bit of U.S. footage with it. And it's mostly just recut Japanese footage, just redubbed. That's awesome. And song that became this. Too. That's so yeah. cool. The song rips. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The little dip down at the end. Right. Yeah. That- Oh yeah. man, but yeah, like that. But like, if you look at it like that, it's more like impressive to me. It's like how much you can get away with an edit. They fucked Zordon yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They fucked Zordon and over. They fucked Zordon over hard. Yeah, we talked about it on the Halloween episode. Yeah, <laughs> the, he didn't get paid shit. He got paid yeah. for one episode, dude. Really? Like they're trying to do now. Yeah, that's what they're trying to basically do with extras. Um, Bruce Willis sold his likeness. Yeah, he did because he got, got the dementia. Because yep. he's got the thing. <laughs> he's got the thing. I didn't want to say oh, it wrong. I, I knew somebody was going to Have you ever seen Moonlighting? Yeah. yeah. You have? Oh my god! You're like one of the few people that I know that has seen Moonlighting. Have you ever seen this it show? It sounds really familiar. I thought the guys remember his fucking singing career as Bruno. Oh, my, I didn't even know Bruce that. Bruce Willis had a singer, uh, had a singing career as Bruno. He used to be the killer in the '80s, dude. You remember how like when he like, had hair, dude? Everyone makes fun of like Garth Brooks when he did like the Chris Gaines. Yeah, like a lot of stars did that shit. Um, alternative Garth, source of income. Yeah, like Garth Brooks did Chris Gaines as like an alternate project, but like a lot of stars, like Bruce Willis did Bruno as like a fucking singing thing. Eddie Murphy had a song. Oh yeah, yeah Eddie Don Johnson. Uh, My girl wants to party all the yeah, time. Yeah, girl wants to. Yeah, that's such a uh, Don Johnson. 
from fucking Nash Bridges and like oh, Miami yeah. Vice. Yeah. He had a fucking song called Heartbeat. He, he was also the Marlboro Man. It's on Grand Theft Auto 5. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. He had a number one single. He was the Marlboro Man in um, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. And if you go back and watch that movie, it's like made in the 80s, but set in the 90s. Like it's a future dystopian kind of thing. Yeah. And this billboard in there is of Die Hardest. Oh. Which is hilarious because that's really the way it went. Well, we talked about like what, what, <laughs> Jesus, dude. He can't even. He can, you can't even hear anymore. He doesn't even <laughs> understand anymore. And he's so I'm, I'm just saying giving, they like, did die harder, die uh, harder. He, he die died the, the hardest. hardest inside, dude. <laughs> and then he gets to get cucked by Ashton Kutcher for a while. <laughs> hey, what a good cuck! Okay, right. Right. <laughs> cook and cuck. How about yeah. that letter they wrote, dude, about their boy? Oh, oh shit! I didn't even, Danny, I, uh, not Danny Elfman. Not, uh, Dan, <laughs> Danny Elfman. <it> was <laughs> Danny McBride. Not Danny McBride. What's his name? Danny Masterson. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, I'll take it. the rapist for 300. <laughs> oh my god, that is so, it's like Oh my Danny Elfman was a convicted. You know, the guy that did all the music for yeah. Be- Beetlejuice, Pee Wee's Big Playhouse, Spider Man, Spider Man, you know. Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> You uh, so Danny Masterson. Yeah, yeah. They wrote a letter saying like, "Hey, bro, don't like put him in that hard spot. Don't put him in the hard spot." <laughs> They're like, "He's a good guy." And then wow. they said they when they the got video. busted out, yeah, <laughs> yeah they said funny. we didn't know it was going to be public. What? Yeah, dude. That's like when uh, Pamela Anderson and uh, Tommy Lee got their shit stolen. Yep. Uh-huh. For that video, they're like, "Well, we didn't, we didn't plan for it." It's like, yeah, did you? Did you guys did- watch that show on Hulu? Uh, oh, dude, I, it's dope. I really? haven't seen the whole oh, thing. Now. Watch, it's made by Seth Rogen and stuff, and it's it's really fucking good. It's uh, really? it, it recreates everything that happens, and it's like Tommy Lee was a dick to these people that were renovating this house. And I'm not saying what they did was wrong; it was right at it all. I'm uh-huh. not, but like they show like this guy, these carpenters stuff, were, like redoing these houses and like this mansion, and Tommy is just like, um, oh, this jacuzzi that's right here, and he built this like thing. I want it like two inches over this way. Redo it. And oh, then, like, he ended up, like, not paying them and shit. And, uh, like, okay. they were pissed off. And then they, like, found out the that motive. there was a video and they fucking robbed the safe. There's a motive. Uh, and they find the tape in the safe. Watch out who uh, you're talking to when you're dealing with service people. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> yeah, you'll be getting people spitting in your food and stealing like your alleged tape. Like, allegedly, they even went back at one point <laughs> to get their tools and shit. And then he didn't even get his tools back. He got, like, chased off the property by gunpoint by Tommy Lee. Like, he lost his tools, lost everything, and lost, like, Was 15, he still 000. doing drugs then? I have no idea, but like that's what they point they paint in this like Hulu show is like this guy was like, and it's Seth Rogen played as the guy that does the stealing. Uh, but then it shows like this whole all the follow and it goes very like how it ruined Pamela and it kind of made Tommy legendary, but it ruined yeah, Pamela. Yeah, and it goes through all that shit. And it then was it also ten shows, years too early. Yeah, if it would have happened in the two thousands, it would have been like. Man. But it's what honestly launched dial up like porn and it launched a whole bunch of porn sites. It it started the porn industry on the internet. Mm-hmm. Wow, and. Dude, watch the Hulu show. It's so fucking cool, and it's funny. Okay. It's dark, but it also doesn't, like, I don't want to say, uh, what do you call They're it? In uh, a it, doesn't, it, it doesn't romanticize <laughs> the guy that Seth Rogen's playing either, because it shows, like, the fallout. Like, he gets... He doesn't go well for him. They're, uh-huh. they're in a real contentious like, lawsuit right now, um, the Motley Crue guys, with uh, the original guitar player... And I'm seeing on the internet that every, really old. Guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was their daddy pretty much the whole time. Mick what? Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mick Mars. Yeah, dude. he was he was their daddy through the whole thing. He's like ten. Bro, he wrote all the riffs. Yeah, he looks like a fucking grandpa. Yeah. So they they're like they he, put out this book and all this stuff and the dirt and everything, and then he's like coming out saying, "Well, that's not true, and this isn't true, and blah 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 blah." And He's then like, I was the one doing all that. They're heroin. basically trying to not pay him for a certain amount of work on this newer Motley Crew income. And then they're trying to say that he didn't contribute shit. And now all these other people that have worked with him in the last 10 years are like coming out saying, like, he produced this song, this song, this song, this song. And then, like, here's 20 songs he wrote for Motley Crew, but that they wouldn't let make it on the album or whatever. So to say he didn't contribute. Is bullshit or whatever, yeah. but regardless, I'm just saying while they were all acting like dumb little babies, 
He was the one that was like, all right, guys, let's go make sure we get yeah. paid today. Come on. Well, it's like, you know, I know you guys aren't the biggest wrestling guys, but like people talked about like DX back in the day, Gen D Generation X. Like, Generation like, like, X. And like every single one of them was on drugs and shit except for Triple H. And yeah, then you wonder the why he's the one that's guy. running the fucking WWE now. The one that fucked like, the daughter. He's the one that fucked the daughter and fucking runs all creative in WWE now. And he's the one that was clean, never did drugs or alcohol, and always took his body like a temple and was always the main eventer. Everybody yeah. else was strung out, going to rehab all the time, and all that shit, and their <laughs> careers just fucking spiraled. Dude, uh, I will say this. Except for Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn, I don't know if you know who that is. Billy Gunn is a genetic freak. He's like in his 50s, and he looks like he's fucking 30. The dude is, I gotta show you. That's him now. Wow, he looks like he's like 35, almost. Him in the 90s. Wow. He's drinking that baby blood, dude. And that's him now in his 50s, still wrestling in AEW. Wow, dude's Themselves. fucking massive too. He's like almost seven foot tall. Did he do? Like, did he just drink and everything too? He, was he like a hardcore partier? No, uh, no, I mean, I know he did a, probably some cocaine and shit like that, but like, like yeah, the, that guy looks like it. AEW, I mean, you can get steroids probably. Um, but like, yeah, probably probably steroids, but I'm. He's now known as Daddy Ass in AEW. Um, <laughs> so I love this. So um, back in the day, D Generation X, this guy's name was Badass Billy Gunn. I remember, yeah. Um, due to trademarks and WWE owning, owning names and stuff like that, when they leave the company, you can't really use your name anymore. That's a thing that happens a lot of times uh -huh. with wrestlers. It sucks. Because the WWE's like, oh, you we own that character. You can't oh, be that wow. name or anything. So that happens to a lot of people. So when he went there, he couldn't say that he was badass Billy Gunn. He could say his name is Billy Gunn. Uh -huh. So he joined this group called The Acclaimed, and it's a younger tag team. And... They were, they had this, they were like, okay, well, we can call you. You're like our daddy, so we're going to call you Daddy Ass. Uh, it works for this So new it's generation. a way to get around Badass Billy Guns, and now he's Daddy Ass Billy uh, Guns. Degeneration Because his son's wrestling now, and they're called the Guns, the Sons, so he's Daddy Guns, so it's Daddy Ass. Oh, damn, that's cool. Yeah, and it's just ways to getting around that shit. And it's no, like, that's, that's, I like that. It's uh, like there's this group called The Revival. Well, now they're called FTR, uh -huh. um, one of the best tag teams in the fucking world. Amazing game, uh, wrestlers. In the WWE, they were called the Revival. Uh -huh. Well, the Young Bucks—I don't know if you know who that is. They're a tag team in AEW. They're indie wrestlers. They were always getting asked on the indies. Well, we'd love to see you guys fight the Revival. We'd love to see you guys fight the Revival. So they made this meme called "Fuck the Revival." They're just—that was their answer. Their answer, and it went viral. It was just called "Fuck the Revival." FTR, uh -huh. and it became their meme. Just FTR. Well, when the Revival got released by WWE, they couldn't use their names anymore. They didn't know what to do, so they hit up the Young Bucks. And the Young Bucks go, oh, you can use FTR as your name. Oh, And wow. that's their that's brand that name now. And now they go by, they embraced it. Now it's FTR. That's their brand. Fuck and it's Fuck the, the Revival. That's pretty cool. I like, so, like, it turned it around. Smart. Yeah. Smart. smart what are the loopholes? Dudley Boys up to these days? The Dudley Boys couldn't be, can't be Dudley Boys. I uh, know. They were the sickest, dude. They were table smashing. That's probably the most famous one. Jeez. When, really? they, when yes. they left WWE, they couldn't be called Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley. Dude, they were the sickest. They, got, they had to be called... Bully Ray and Devon Team 3D. They yeah, named their name dude. after their fucking finisher because they couldn't use their name. Yeah. Uh, Most famous tag team bro, in the world. Dude, they couldn't literally, use their name. if insane, you seen actually. them coming out, you knew tables were getting smashed. And that all came from because WWE bought the ECW video library. Uh, and because they own the video library, they own the rights to the names that they originated back in ECW back in the 90s. So, look, I got a good wrestling story. It's crazy how law works That's like that. Crazy back whenever fuck. The Rock was fighting with that group. I always forget their um, name. Nation of Domination. The Nation of Domination, dude. It was like he was, in he it. was the heel, dude. He uh -huh. was like the up and coming rising star, but still like he was like he was a fixture in the group of a bunch of dudes. Yeah. And Stone Cold was still reigning supreme at the time. And like you could see this building or whatever. And then so my boy went to one of these WrestleManias and he got The Rock to sign a card back when he was in the Nation of Domination or nice. whatever. And then this is how real wrestling fans are, dude. When it fucking hit the fan and he left the Nation of Domination, I remember the episode, dude. I was watching it. My boy ripped up the car, dude. Ripped up the Rock's autograph. It's like, it like ripping up a rookie card. From wow. 1995, dude. Yeah, straight wow. up. And he'll never let himself live it down. And I'm like, bro, sometimes you just got to let your emotions happen and you just got to wait until tomorrow. Sleep on it, dude. Yeah. Wow. So funny. It's, dude, it's fucking... <laughs> Who would have thought, dude? Back then, I, also, The Rock plays a character in this movie called Southland Tales, and it's kind of like made by That's the That's a weird Dark. movie. It's a good one, dude. I love it. I'm a fan. It's a cult classic. Kevin Smith's an old man in that, like the time travel. Right. It's a weird 
time. And there's an all star cast in it, and it kind of just got. It was a B movie, but it was made by um, the Donnie Darko guy. Yeah, right. So it's got that weird, like time travel kind of tangent. Didn't it go over budget? Wasn't that the thing about it? And they got they had to like push it out. Something. I mean, it was just weird in general. Sean William Scott was in it, but The Rock plays in it, and it was the first movie I ever took him as a serious actor because he plays an actor in the movie. And he plays like this superstar megalomania character that happens to be dating like a senator's daughter or some shit. Uh -huh. But when he's playing himself in the movie, he's like doing the old rock character. Uh. So he's like acting terribly, but it's like a part of the act. And then okay. whenever he's like private with the chick, he's like a good actor and he's like a normal person. Like, I know this sounds like a lot to No, that makes soak sense. In, like, but... I, I felt the same way about John Cena. The first time I actually really liked him was when I flashed, watched him in Trainwrecked. I got you. With Amy Schumer. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like talking, doing all that gay shit in the fucking yeah. theater. Like, I'm totally going to fuck you in the ass. Just say fuck you. Yeah. I will fuck you, all right? I will enter you. You're going you're gonna to enter me? Did you hear what he said? What are you talking about right now? I'm just trying to do it. You're just talking about raping him. You're not about that life, champ. I can see. Threads, I'm telling you, they're super gay. Too sexual? Yeah. This has to be the corniest muscle white dude I've ever seen in my life. Okay, Coco, beware. You know what? You're being a all right? You know what I do with that I lick him. Okay. Uh, what the f wants to Okay. <laughs> like, like, wow, he's really being authentically John Cena. Um, oh, no. <laughs> right, well, it's like, you know, Miley Cyrus did the same thing at one point, but it's like whenever you can step outside of the character and, like, make fun of your own character. Yeah, sure. That's, that's always I'm cool. like, okay, I'm going to take you seriously as a person now. You're not just Hannah Montana forever it's wondering about the how you're going to be. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it ain't it about is. how hard we get there. It ain't about what's oh, waiting man. on the other side. And fuck that Hemsworth guy. Yeah, dude, fuck that guy, dude. Straight up. Oh, I was yeah, always... The guy that, like, was like, you're being too weird, Yes, right? yes, right? dude. Okay. That's the way they portrayed it, at least. And I'm like, bro, you're giving yeah. up a golden goose, you fucking coward. Why couldn't that... I mean, I mean, we're talking about fucking celebrity ram romances. Like, who gives a shit about the fucking Taylor Swift shit now? Dude, she only did it. I don't even she know. Only How much did is she getting it? paid by the NFL? Dude, she only did it. Here's the real story. Now I'm interested. To get rid of the Google search result about her having the highest emissions from private jet flights. I just think it's a thing to drum ticket sales for the NFL because it was dying. She went to a Jets That's game. That's really impressive. And like, who, how can if we you, get the women If on you us? Google yes. Taylor Swift oh. Jets, it shows her at a Jets game. Now Before, it, <laughs> it was, this bitch spends more didn't money they, on didn't gas. Didn't they do that with Joe Biden's uh, son? That's why he smoked crack, right? So it'd be like Something's Joe, on the laptop. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> he started exactly. off the edge of a laptop. Yeah, That's why. It, it, they that, pay people allegedly. lots of money to come up with these game plans. Yeah. Well, I want that job. As a normal guy, you can pay somebody money to do your search engine optimization. So why would you think as a famous person you couldn't get somebody to be like, hey, I don't I'm like just, that I'm Google just search. I want let's, a new job about Right, making... yeah, I'll come up with stories all day long. Yeah, hey, like, look, you got to go date this dude. We got to go take him to dinner at this steakhouse, dude. Fucking get a couple paparazzi out so, there. Um, Kanye West is going to be walking down the street while y'all are coming out and shit. Here's how I look at it. I always look at, like, my air fryer over there. That's just a convection oven. Right. Convection ovens have been in fucking cooks Forever. and oven and, and kitchens Same thing with for the fucking years. Yep. But it finally went full circle to now it's in home kitchens and it's 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 cheap enough materi uh, material wise to where it's cost effective to put it in home kitchens yeah. and stuff like that. Uh -huh. AI, Chat GPT, all this shit you see that people are freaking about now has been there probably for a while. Right. It's just it now just getting to the point now it's out in the public. It wasn't yep. in normal and language. What does it take for somebody to fucking do a smear campaign of like, I don't like this person? It doesn't. It's not within re reason to not think about something the like fakes hitting and a such. button. Right. And you can create 20,000 fucking articles or something like that about a person and just do a smear campaign and then push it out into Google. It's, yeah. It's what the government's worried about. It's how they're going to regulate it. Yeah. Because they keep saying that, well, you could just make a deep fake of Ted Cruz talking about how much he loves dick. 
And nobody would believe well, yeah, he doesn't but, love Yeah, but how, how well do you think the government's going to regulate deep fakes when you can't even regulate deep fakes? That's pride? what I'm saying, though. And I keep trying to tell, <laughs> look, I try to tell people that point more than anything. And anytime some subject of the government comes up where people are like less informed, I always say, hey, you went to go get a driver's license. Imagine your experience at the DMV and how that day felt to you. And that is how every government office operates across the board. Yep. So no matter what they're regulating or what their plan is or whatever it might be, take that bureaucracy and apply it to it and that's why you can't get shit done but you still got to pay more for it's it. It's like the homeless problem. It's like the the joke that is the homeless problem in San Francisco right now of they can't afford to build housing for the homeless because it would cost more than the actual housing. And even when somebody donate like okay, John Oliver talked about this. There was like a public, uh, like outhouse or public restrooms that you can put out on the side of the road. They're these custom ones. It was going to cost like twenty million or something like that just to put public restrooms out in San Francisco because people were just shitting on the streets. Yeah, it just costs less to clean and this so shit up. Though this company was like, "We'll donate them. Here it is, pre-built everything. You just have to put them down. It would cost more with permits and everything just to do that than to actually build it themselves. Yeah, we we'll just pay a really? dude to go clean. Yes, up the and shit. it still didn't get done. Wow. We're talking dude. millions. Red tape, red the tape. The red tape. How can I get a quarter of this million dollars in my pocket? Then I'll say yes to it. This place was like, we'll just drop them off by a trailer. These portable bathrooms that you can just drop down, then just put them on the things. And it was going to cost too much money. And it was going to take months and stuff like that. Regulations and like environmental regulations and checking all the fucking stuff. And it just never get done. And meanwhile, there's just shit piling up in the fucking San Francisco on the streets. Wow, dude. Sanctuary. <laughs> It's like they didn't show that in Shang Chi. No, <laughs> my teacher told me he he went to he's been to some places and uh, there's been a lot of shit on the streets, you know, the, in America. Yeah, it, fucking Austin, man. <laughs> I mean, it, all the people that fucking uh, left during COVID and left from California were like, "We're going to Austin. It's gonna be the new liberal little home in Texas." And it's just fucking little California. The homeless it's problems growing. Everything's growing. Always been it's like that the, though. Mean down there, those homeless people. I've been there. around that place for ten years, dude, and it's like it was getting progressively worse ten years ago. My friends were living there in a one bedroom studio apartment for like 750 a month yeah. and then over the 10 years it became like 1450 and Woo! then they're like having to move into a house and live with other people everybody that i know that used to be of like the hip austin culture yeah. they moved away 5 years ago to new mexico yep. and they all live in albuquerque now well the best part about it too is <laughs> which is still equally as like a gross city but it's like not as do you remember the whole ted cruz thing when they had the blizzard in texas like 2 years oh, ago yeah who wouldn't want to be in Cancun, but, dude? But what I'm getting at is <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Texas's, Texas's power grid can't support already the people that are in it. Yep. And we're getting mass flooding of people from California and the entertainment industry coming in to make it like this new hub, which it already was the indie place because Austin City Limits and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. South by Southwest, stuff like that. Dude, they are- But like- they're, it's compounding the issue, and they can't. They don't have the grid to keep up with this. Right. And then there's rich people that talk about like the power just goes out randomly and shit like that, and it just flickers and stuff like that, and like they don't have that stuff, just for like mansions, like <laughs> you know, like their mansions just go out of power and flicker and shit like that. You know these mansions, multi million dollar mansions, and you have shitty power. Our friend went That's there incredible. recently for a trip. And he was just talking about how everybody kept scolding him for trying to use cash. Yeah. And, like, he got cash out just in case it wouldn't be, like, swipey machines at this event. And <laughs> they're like, they're like we have swipey machines. Uh, who uses cash anymore? Like, cash is dead. Yeah. Um, are you gross? Like, I'm like, bitch, you're not wearing a mask. Like, you can touch the He's money. Like, are you buying drugs with this? Right. Like, yeah. there might be a little Coke left on that bill. What do you know, dude? Come on now. But if you want an abortion down there, you better... <laughs> you better get out of here. Well, that's what I was Go telling him. Was like, hey, <laughs> Go just, on, get. get out of my yard. Just tell him, show me your legal weed, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. You know? Oh, like, like, oh, I thought I took that the wrong way. I thought, like, if someone gives you a hassle down there, just show them that you have legal yeah, weed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what do you got here? You guys are so free, but you don't even have this legal weed. We're in the yeah. most unfree state in the union, and at least we got legal weed, you yeah. fucks. Yeah. <laughs> It makes it somewhat better. It's like we're Colorado adjacent. Like, right. <laughs> we're Wook adjacent. Yeah. 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 Wook adjacent. <laughs> Straight up. Oklahoma is Wook adjacent, dude. A Wook is like a type of person that would be walking around these music festivals selling these things called a Sheenus. 
I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a sheen is. Sh- is that like a cover for your? Well, it's like a funnel. Oh and yeah, it goes I've seen those. in there, and you pull the hose out the zipper hole, and you just piss like a dude. It's wherever. a beer bong for a lady's vagina. Right, oh, exactly. Man. So this chick would be walking around with a kiddie pool and a couple of <laughs> jugs of water. And a sheenus, and she would roll up to your campsite, and she'd try to sell it, and then she would drink a jug of water and piss in the kiddie pool. That's how a look. They, how, they were uh, they were popular at Trump rallies, and like the make make a great thing. The sheenus thing was like, yeah, it took, it took off. Like you're you're gonna spend twenty hours hoping to get a, cl- a glimpse of the my pillow guy. You need to piss in this funnel. <laughs> oh my, oh my god! Someone dressed up as the my pillow guy at, a, at Hell for yeah. Halloween, and they nice. won a costume contest. I was like, and it nice. was a, it was a chick too. So I was like, yeah, yes, <laughs> bro. He got heated. There's a video of him in like one of those. Whatever they call it, where you're like dealing with legal shit before the court date, where yeah. you're like in an interview with the lawyers arenas. or whatever. Yeah, there it is, something like that. And the, the dude was off. like <laughs> roasting him about the pillow's softness, and he fucking flipped out, dude. Um, do you guys know who Adam Ray is? Mm, Comedian. Sounds familiar. Adam Ray, yeah, yeah. Um, if you don't know him, and this for the audience too, like. He's doing this thing now where he impersonates Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. That's uh, right. And he's doing Dr. Phil lives. And it's basically like just he's doing interviews like this, like a podcast. Uh-huh. And it's him as Dr. Phil doing a fake Dr. Phil show. And he's totally in character, but it's like a raunchy Dr. Phil. Nice. And it's hilarious. And uh, he does fake uh, little ads in the middle. Like, we'll be right back. And he goes to a break. And it cuts to a break, and it's like a fake my pillow ad, and it's him playing <laughs> as Mike Lindell going nuts on Coke. Like, oh, it's like they're funny as shit. Uh, Mike Lindell, that's the guy's name. Yeah, Mike okay. Lindell. Okay, all right. Yeah, this dude was pissed. Okay. Keep talking. Wait, wait. At the guy who asked the question, like Mike he asked pissed. him a loaded question about the pillows. Softness. softness and he's like, "You sound like a motherfucker that's never had one, dude. If you just fucking bought one, you wouldn't be saying this shit about it." He's like, like "He's like, of course it's supposed to be soft." It's soft enough. It's soft enough for my wife. It's soft enough for me. Soft enough for your wife, too, motherfucker. I got a potty. Can we do that real quick? Go ahead. This episode of Unloading Meat is not brought to you by your favorite mattress company, such as Sotva, Purple, hell, even Sealy Posturepedic. Do they even still make that one, Stefano? I don't know. I haven't bought a mattress in quite a while, ever. I usually just get the one left behind from the divorce. And, uh, you know, real talk, it's kind of hard to go back to that same mattress every night now that it's just me and, you know, the, the one that was my marital bed where someone used to spoon me and tell me everything's going to be okay. Every night I just wish that I had a sponsorship from a mattress company such as Sotva. If you want to help me fight this depression, then message your favorite mattress company and tell them to sponsor Unloading Meat. So I'll shut the fuck up. Now... Back to the show. I struggled just like you. I was sleeping under the freeway on some guy's toes. A stranger's breath was my blanket. People don't realize we spend 97% of our lives in bed, dead asleep, dreaming about Fig Newton parades and <laughs> Katy Perry in the ass. How did I get off of that? <laughs> oh, you must have gone to AA or found Jesus. Fuck no, I just ran out of money. <laughs> if you don't like the my pillow, oh, there's something wrong with your big fucking head. <laughs> Jesus loved the my pillow. In Jesus' name, Mount spent Godfather, Dogfather, Godfather's <laughs> Pizza. These are the times to get the sleep that you deserve. Don't take my word for it. Listen to the people of the streets. What's your name? My name is Mark. I met you in a bar last night. You paid me 50 bucks to be here. Yeah, all right, all right. Be cool, be cool. Feel that pillow. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, all right. Feel feel that part of the pillow. Wow. Yeah, but my, my current pillow is better than this. Who the fuck asked you, motherfucker? <laughs> Oh, look at that! Just sleeping like a baby. It's dead asleep. You can only get that on a my pillow. He's fine though. He's not. He's not dead. See, you can't shake when you're dead. <laughs> oh. This is not good. Operators are standing by. <laughs> Call us right now so you can swap out your pillow for my pillow and stop sleeping like a fucking loser. Sorry for swearing. I'm just passionate and high. What? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> ah! Jesus loved sleep. He was always sleeping, and he and he and he couldn't do it without a, a my pillow, which he would have had. You know, Jesus would be here right now, being like, "I love the pillows," and I don't do voices, <laughs> but I do do pillows. 
<laughs> dude, dude double. pillows. That was uh, incredible. Yeah, that's just like a, a, a little fucking what ad a he champion. does in the middle that's of his Doctor Phil lives. He plays that for the audience. That's awesome. That was great. Yeah, they're fucking great little ads. <laughs> That's all I think about. What I think of Mike Pillow now, dude. Now that's all I'm gonna think about too. <laughs> Holy shit! I like that a lot. That was fun. He's the new one. Sham Wow guy. Yeah. Oh, that is true. Or the OxyClean guy. If that the, guy, hey, if yeah. the OxyClean guy also had a flag of Trump on a Velociraptor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It was death. Was pre karma. Oh man, you rest know what? in peace, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just had the weirdest thought. Okay, this is gonna be really weird. So you don't know, like that Jordan Kepler, the guys like from the Daily Show that go up to like Trumpers and they ask them random questions, trying to like, stump them and stuff like that. I think so. Like, okay, so I had this idea, just random thought. People that love Trump and stuff like that usually love to like embellish how great he is. Like, you know, that's why we talked about like the Trump on the Velociraptor with the uh-huh. machine guns. They love those flags and then they see him like as a fucking Marvel hero and stuff like that. I want to just ask them the general question How much do you think Donald Trump comes? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Oh, he, yeah, he, he blows big loads, dude. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> dude. dude he, they're like ropes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to ask that question and just kind of get the, the, you know, the whole. It and paints if your get, car white. If, if they get, if they get, like, 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 why'd you ask that? It's like, yeah, he probably does like little, little, little loads, barely anything. No, yeah. no, yeah. <laughs> no, he lasts for hours. Yeah, and I bet it's real bitter. No, it's the saltiest shit no. ever. I bet with all that diet coke and fucking KFC. That's why he I'm takes talking. those red pills that everybody knows about. <laughs> do you, make you laugh. Do you think longer. when he comes, it's orange? I think it's it's a just little, tang. Yeah, well, it it's looks like Gojo, powder. dude. Tang from his tank. It's like Ooh. white with a little orange tank, like tank. texture in it. Tank, tank, tang. Scrub the it's like, why is this, <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> Jesus. I was watching School of Rock last night with my daughter, and it got the, the girl that's like singing the Aretha. She's like, shame, shame, shame. Oh, uh, what a classic. Like, tank, tank, tank. <laughs> just licking it all the that astronaut dude. drink. We have, we've been going through that. My seven year old me, like I've been showing her like the classics, like just like movies that are good kid movies, or just stuff that growing yeah. up and like yeah. went through Jumanji, nice. Never Ending Story, classics, um, The Mask, Woo! Um, great one, best. She recently we just watched fucking School of Rock last night. Nice, fucking love Jack Black, dude. That that movie still holds true up, hero, dude. dude. That movie inspires so many people to get into music. Oh, uh, did you know that uh, he they almost didn't get the. Immigrant song on there? Really? Yeah, and uh, I can't remember specifically, but he like at Jack Black asked Robert Plant personally. Makes sense. Yeah, and he's, he's like, like bro, please. come on. And he's like, he's like, and then they let like they don't usually let any of their music in any any uh, music or yeah. movies and stuff. But uh, yeah, Jack Black and them asked him, and they said yeah. Yeah, thanks fucking Napster and fucking uh, Metallica from that. Because yeah, yeah thanks dude. Lars. Thanks Lars. Oh, the other part of that, bringing that up, is I've been watching all these old movies, right? I watched Small Soldiers. Yeah. Classic. That has fucking Zeppelin in it. Cause really? Because Kirsten Dunst's character, her whole gimmick, and she's the, the, pix, the <laughs> dream pixie girl. Uh-huh. Her whole fucking character is she's like, I love Led Zeppelin. Cause she's a cool indie girl. Uh, she's the cool girl that he likes. Cause she likes Led Zeppelin, and so like in the background, you'll see a Led Zeppelin poster on her poster on her uh-huh. wall, like the random '90s girl who's 11 who has a Led Zeppelin poster. Where the fuck did she get that? This is before Amazon. Yeah, cool dad. Like, where the For fuck real. did she find that? And then it's like dad. it just starts playing it there. like uh, Led Zeppelin in the background. This is throwaway music. And I'm really? like, this is before Napster, and people knew about music rights yep. and how expensive this shit was, and what they were worth, basically. Yep, yep. Like. Can you imagine how much it would cost for Bohemian Rhapsody to be in fucking Wayne's World in these this day and age? Never would have Huge. thought of it, but yeah, that was Huge. the staple of the movie. And, and then also... Uh, that, that relaunched Queen after he died. Right. Queen didn't have a hit after he died. And that being in Wayne's World put it back in the number one spectrum and made wow. Queen a household name after he was dead. Because Queen was basically just went away. Wow, there was just like an 80s and early 70s, late yeah. 70s man. because he died in like 91, 92 of the AIDS, and then yep. Wayne's World 1 came out in 91 or 92. Wow, and I did they, not know that. Yeah. That's cool. That's and pretty cool. That song, that, that Power scene. Power of Movies. Yeah. Ballroom Blitz was also another hit from that movie. I mean, yeah. it's not from that movie, but uh, that was on that movie. But like, there's, there's a thing that's lost about that is like, 
you know, we talk about editing and stuff like that. Uh-huh. There's a lot of power that comes from editing. You can get away with You can make jokes better. Uh-huh. You can make jokes that didn't work, work just by putting up a picture or something in post. Yep. You yep. can do that with the power of editing. Small Soldiers is the thing that stands out. There's a clip of the guy that delivers the toys. And you know Small Soldiers. Like, the toys come alive. Classic. Yeah, like the Gors- Army Soldiers trying Gorgonites. to take them. Yeah. Um, the guy that's delivered the toys gets held at gunpoint by one of the soldiers. And right when they're doing that, he's listening to Surrender by Cheap Trick. Uh. They don't allude to it. You just hear it in the background on the radio of the truck. And I'm like, you couldn't do that in this day without paying a fortune. But it, it helps you know what's going on. Because like he's like, hold still. And it's like, mommy's all right. Daddy's all uh, right. You can hear it in the background. Nice. And if you do the little Easter egg, that's fucking Surrender. You're like, that's fucking genius. But you couldn't do that nowadays. You can't no. just put a track in there just as a joke. Nope. No. Nope. It wouldn't work those days. So there's something that's kind of lost from that meme culture, kind of the shit of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always wonder, dude, that why pretty, movies yeah. aren't as cool as they were in the 90s. I mean, of course, there's good movies out now, for sure. And I'm not saying if you make something, you shouldn't get paid age. for it. Like, I like, yeah, yeah, but it, not, it wasn't... Now it is not as easy just to put, like, a whole new soundtrack of, like, classic hits. Well, and my thing is, like, it's hard to say what is making something so successful and what is fair use. Um, AEW, we brought up wrestling and stuff, if you want to... It's yeah. You can, this is the ashtray. Um, AEW is really great about using licensed tracks for their stars because they want the show to feel like an indie show or like a all, like a rock show. Uh-huh. I you came go to, it. to AEW because of the band Code Orange. Yes, and as well as Poppy. I don't know if you're familiar. I know with Poppy. The artist Poppy, but she did a whole EP for them. And it was sick as fuck. And then uh, recently, maybe it's WWE and AEW. You mean NXT, NXT? Yeah, NXT was the poppy one. And then um, recently, I could be wrong about this, but I think I'm right about this. But that one chick band with the blue, we talked about this before. I'll think of it in a minute. You're talking about Paramore? No, 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 no. Oh. It's a newer metal band. But anyways, like what... Certain people would have thought, you know, and I still disagree that selling out is even a real thing, but they they sold out. And I'm like, bro, if you were in a fucking metal band and the AEW people came and said, hey, we want you to open up this show and do this thing on nationally syndicated television and blah, 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 blah. You telling me you would say no? Like the biggest money opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've talked about that. How Like just because. Stay right there. I got to keep talking. Uh, Just like. I got something perfect for that. How like. uh. People think that's selling out, getting to do shit that you've already wanted to do. Yeah, like the singer of Code Orange, who was the drummer, he's kind of like the patriarch of the band. If I don't know if that's a good word for it, but he was like, oh, I was a wrestling fan when I was a kid. Oh, we talked about wrestlers that couldn't use their names. Yeah. There was a girl named Ruby Riot in WWE. She got fired. They wouldn't let her use her name. Uh-huh. She based that name off of Ruby Soho. Nice. From fucking um, um, Rancid. Rancid. Uh-huh. The guy from Rancid is a huge wrestling fan. He even has a light wrestling podcast, stuff like that. She goes to AEW. Look at her name. Ruby Soho. Nice. That's sick as fuck. He gave her that name, like and her. that's her theme song for her entrance. Oh. Because she was released during cool. COVID, had no idea what to do with an identity or anything, and he came to her and was like, hey, I know you were inspired by this. If you want to use Ruby Soho, he did this on a live podcast. Um, again, without embarrassing myself, too much. Uh, Ruby came from Ruby Soho. Okay, so um, that was. And so I hold that very dear to my heart. <laughs> okay, well, that was going to be one of my suggestions. Why yeah. not just do do Ruby Soho? I Ruby mean, I Soho. know the guy who can. Cl- I, I got a couple guys I know who can clear the music. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Uh, no, I you mean, you can't say yeah. that to me and <laughs> have me not lose my mind right now. Like you. Well, you <laughs> I swear to God, I, I could, I could, I could have that cleared, and then I can get on a group text right now and get you cleared in about ten minutes. So is this conversation done? Uh, you yeah, <laughs> you can have it. I give you my my blessing to use it free of charge, and you can use the rancid song as your entrance song free of charge That's for life. Cool. And she's now the living embodiment of the song Ruby Soho. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like. That's fucking dope. And now it's her merch and you see her. Like, that's yeah. how she looks. Like That's dope as fuck, dude. And I'm like, that's fucking a cool story. Yeah, you know what I, know. I mean? Helping each other out. Yeah. That's cool. When the inspiration comes back to be the, be the, uh, be the root of it. 
and they had Rancid perform it. Right, that's what I'm that's saying. Cool. They've got all the sick bands that do their live shows at the event. So, like, this is an AEW show, and the crowd is going to be pumped for this. Like, now they have a fucking, like, mascot for the song, and it's yeah. now put it in the popularity again. This song's old. Yeah, this is like a 90s song. Yeah. Well, not, yeah, we say old, but we did it's a 90s. 30 years ish. Yeah. Unknown. Uh, Ruby, 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 so hard. That's what I meant by recently, I feel like it's become like cooler in the metal or rock community to like be open about your wrestling fandom. Yeah. Whereas before you might have got a little haze for it. And then they play her to the fucking ring. And the whole crowd's singing along because they know the song. They're, they're songs that people know that are good hooks. And it's just, it makes moments. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. And it makes it like, you know, like whenever we're doing comedy, a good entrance song can really make the mood. Yeah, it can really it can really it play up. you up, especially like somebody before you sucked or something like that. If you have a good <laughs> opening song, or, like, or it was really good too, or really good, yeah, it, yeah. it changed the mood. It sets the tone. Yeah, yeah, it gives you having a, a good song. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so like with AEW, they've really gone into licensed songs. So like, my favorite guy is a guy named Orange Cassidy. If you, I don't know if you know who this guy is. Not familiar. Orange Cassidy has a thing called sloth style. Orange Cassidy, his entire wrestling character is basically Ryan Gosling from the movie Driven or Drive. Okay. Remember where he just has that jacket and he's just kind of cool, too cool for school and just like can't be bothered. Right, yeah, right. Uh-huh. Orange Cassidy's gimmick is he can't. He may try. Yeah, it's International Women's Day. You know what that means? That's woke. <laughs> Dynamite. <laughs> So this is the debut of his song. Old Sacktown. Shout out to Sacktown. But, uh, look, listen to this crowd, and it sets the tone. It is great being with you. Using right songs. This is so much fun. What an Builds the anticipation. And what a program we have tonight. But look how low effort his stuff is. Remember, he doesn't try. It's going to be awesome. It's just Sharpie. <laughs> And he can't be bothered to carry his championship because it's too heavy, so he uses a Jansport backpack to carry it. <laughs> he does kind of look like Great Value Ryan Gosling. Yeah. And uh, his pyro is just one little that goes, <laughs> if they do it. See? It? <laughs> it was just one little flame. It's a cool video. And there's even typos. <laughs> What an interesting plot point. It's like the drunken uh, master, dude. Missed. Oh, got him with a chop of his own. Oh, look at this furious combination from Dang, Orange he Cassidy. unlocked a cheat code, dude. Spinning back fist. <laughs> but you hear the crowds into it? Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh. Hell yeah. This is a match, and then when it gets really good... Like five minutes into the match, he goes full blast. And it's the difference. That difference. He goes full speed, and you're like, holy shit, he can actually really wrestle. And he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. What a silly yeah. concept. But he only dude. tries when it's really important or when somebody pisses him off. Uh. And so his entire gimmick is just the sloth. He's a sloth style. So, like, there's even the new the video game. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And, uh,. The entire point of his character is you can put your hands in his pockets and just play with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> just kicks. <laughs> and just like not give a fuck. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'd like be playing that character all the it's time. It's fucking fun. I highly recommend if you play the game. Have you ever played like the old wrestling games on N64? I yeah. Have, yeah. Like oh, No yeah, Mercy? Sure. WWE's yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, it's called AEW Fight Forever. They basically recreated that old N64 kind of style wrestling game. Like that. Nice. And each character basically market. has their own move sets. They have their own entrance themes. They have their own entrance styles. And it's just a fun arcade wrestling game. I was nice. a Stone it's Cold fun. fan for sure in the old days. Oh, I was a Sting fan. Sting was the shit. Sting's an AEW. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, hit him. Punch him in the stomach. <laughs> I keep that on there because Sting's a born again Christian and very PC. Uh huh. 
Hit that a couple times to see if it sounds oddly sexual. Oh my god. And <laughs> Im- immediately. I don't think Sting approved this. <laughs> He's like, no, I didn't. You can actually pin those and it'll go one, two, three, or even kick out. I was in like for That's Halloween cool. one year, but I was like the red and black Sting. Ah. Well, so you're just bloody crow. You were just yeah, you're, exactly. I was showing Michaela. I'm like, this is the crow. You were just Brandon world. Lee after the accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Shout out. Shout out to Brandon Lee, dude. Oh my gosh. Poor one. That was out. good. That was yeah. a good one. That's another movie that was fucking cursed. Like that movie had some fucking yep. shit like that. The Exorcist. There's some dude, other there's deep dark conspiracy about the inevitable death, dude, and the relationship with Bruce Lee and his inevitable dark death. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's I guess what... you could say like Alec Baldwin's a little rusty. Yeah, yep. <laughs> you got to learn from somebody. Wrong. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no, I mean, they were like trying to ace him out because he wasn't bringing any money. Two producers, one bullet. Um, <laughs> certain revenue curse. So it's like some people speculate that his son was figuring out what really went down, and they were like, "Nah, can't have it. Never mind." Do you think he secretly died by the one-inch punch? <laughs> yes. See, I'm a reference. The dude. one, the one inch, the one. I'm inch. a reference, dude. You get me going, I'm a fucking reference. The guy. one-inch bullet, dude. See, I want to do something. You guys ever watch Bumpin' Mics with David Tell and like oh, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen it live. Yeah, it was cool. Oh, jealous. Class. Yeah, I jealous. love David. David Tell's my idol. Like Dave, mine too. I've like, seen him like four times. I think he's times. the goat. He's like my favorite. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the memories is like my childhood. Like oh, that's uh, what anthem. got me into doing stand up comedy. Shake my head. Uh, yeah, dude, David. You can Tell. appreciate it. Like, yeah, Gangs Dave, for the Memories still holds up as one of the best comedy albums I've ever heard in my yeah, life. Yeah, that's probably one of the most classic. Yeah, it is a classic now. Um, my I signed all my yearbooks with a David Tell quote. I signed it as, remember when you're young and you think your dad's Superman? <laughs> and then you grow up and realize <laughs> he's just he's a drunk who wears a cape. cape. <laughs> such a such an amazing So trip. you see why I'm trying to be in a comedy now. It makes sense now. Like I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. the guy that was the weird fat kid draw, writing David Tell quotes on the fucking Dewey Oklahoma yearbooks. Hell yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> All the fucking redneck cowboys that didn't impregnate 14 year olds were like, what the fuck is this? Uh, no, David, David Insomniac, dude. That's yeah. what I saw Great show. when I was growing up. We talked about like, that before as like know, um sick. when we do more road gigs, I want to start doing like travel vlogs. Right. And that's why I kinda have that for the wireless. The oh, wireless yeah. mic. Uh-huh. I want to do what he did and kind of mix it with like re- wrestling is doing. So there's a guy named Ethan Page in AEW, and he's very famous now for doing a traveling vlog where every city they go to, he gets the wrestlers and they go on toy hunts. And nice. he videos it, and he's like, hey, what's your favorite toys growing up? Something like that. And they do toy hunts in the local cities. And it generates a lot of views and a lot of fans, a lot of merch. Uh-huh. And it just gets him a following. And I'm like, we should do that as comedians. And I was like, we could do it kind of like Insomniac, where like we do like the last joke of the night, we kind of end the set, and then late night or something like that. Let's go to a vintage stock or go to like a toy mall. Hey, what do you guys collect? Because you know Uh, it it kind of involves all this. And I thought that'd be kind of a cool thing to do, like comedy, doing a vlog and like doing this kind of childhood shit. That is pretty cool. So like I kind of want to do that when I start doing like traveling. We went to that one place in Broken Arrow that had all that crazy Uh shit. Yep, yep. On the way, that's like on the way to go theater. Yeah, we got uh, we got. What inevitably would become the slime cop mask, but yep, it was yep, cool we still have it. Shout yeah. out Broken Arrow, yeah, Broken so Arrow much cool shit co- with the Trump coronavirus Trump mask. coronavirus head, yeah, but it became slime cop. My favorite joke for Broken Arrow is they always think they're classy as fuck, and Broken Arrow they're trying to get classier and classier over there. I guess it's like I kind of I can't see this bougie Tulsa almost now, um, but yet they have a fucking Metro PCS. It's from a out of like converted gas station. I'm right. like, if you're any city and you have a converted gas station that's turned into a Metro PCS, you're, yeah. not, you're not. Yeah, you're bougie as shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit ratchet. <laughs> that is some. That is some ratchet ass shit. They got one, dude. And sometimes in the gas station I go to in the morning, they got like a pull behind trailer where they're throwing free phones out of there. And they can't even afford a Panda Express, just an Egg Roll Express. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. I know exactly where you're talking <laughs> yeah, about, too. You know exactly know the intersection. Exactly where There's you're a talking. gas station metro. Yeah. yeah. And then every abandoned or old converted movies, uh, uh, movie rental place is now just a dispensary yeah. or a vape shop. <laughs> yep. Oh, my gosh. That is so true. Wow. The times have changed, dude. The times have changed. See, I grew up in Oklahoma, man, out here. I grew up in Copan. Do you know where that is? No, actually. Copan I don't. is north. Of, do you know where Dewey? 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so like it goes Tulsa, Owasso, Bartlesville, then there's Dewey, then Copan. Uh-huh. Oh. Copan is right on the border of Kansas. Okay. If you take 75 all the way north. It's like we've been through there. There's like all those billboards that say like, get your Kratom now. Yeah. Like, yeah it's like they, fucking. All boring. they have is one restaurant. They have a truck stop and they have a Dollar General. Yeah. And they have a school. Wow. Um, I went there for one semester and then my parents pulled me out because it was shitty. Um, Put it this way, the, the graduating class of my sister's senior year was like 17. <coughs> wow. Um, Every wow. single dude had a bolo tie in a senior picture, and <laughs> every and almost every single woman was pregnant. Damn. That was Small a class. Town. Small town. Um, They pulled me because like I was like a gifted and talented kid growing up. Uh-huh. Went to Copan, and they were like, oh, you're we're in, we have gifted and talented. All that meant was every segment or every subject, they just gave you double the work. <laughs> so you wouldn't be bored. Wow. And done early. And if you wanted to go to band... They had band, but it was basically just study hall. And if you had the money to bring your own instrument, you could just play it and jam. Right. Wow. Nobody was there that was their actually. band. That's how, <laughs> you know, go. That's they were just like, go. Yeah, yeah just don't. don't <laughs> but we got going. football. We got football. Yeah, football. football. You idiot. Yeah. For sure. But I have this joke where I'm like, it was so small that the only thing they had out there is Dollar General. How'd the town get Wi Fi? Dollar General found a way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's Dollar, it. General, Dollar General for the save, dude. It's Oklahoma, man. Like some towns only have a Dollar General and a Sonic. Dude, everybody's got a Dollar Gen now. It's crazy. It's an evolution. I know over it, the dude. Last 10 <laughs> dude, years, I know. Right? Yeah. Yeah, dude, they only had a Dollar General. That shit was popping, dude. Yeah, they sh- they kept their shit together though, dude. Yeah, they it's did. It's not like some deep Tulsa Dollar Gen where you gotta go in with your gun, fucking ready and shit. <laughs> you they know, got padlocks on the beer shelves in there now, dude. I saw. You know, you know, your town is actually on the up when you start getting a Quick Trip or a Casey's. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I, I honestly, dude, I started thinking this like I was watching these videos. You remember people like, you know, people that shit on like US 7-Eleven. They're like, go to Japan and 7-Eleven is like amazing. It's like fine dining. Uh-huh. They got some wild shit for sure. They got some crazy shit. Like you go to Japan, like the convenience stores are really nice. Are yeah. lit, though. That's kind of what we are now. Are Bucky's kind of made that famous. Yeah. I think Bucky's really set the trend of making that famous because Quick Trip has really come up in the dude. last couple of years of changing their food. For me, it yep. used to be love. I had a Quick Trip earlier, dude. It's good. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty impressed with it. We were talking Anything earlier you want. about how the come and goes made a come up lately, but they're still always weird as fuck. Like, yeah. the food's better, but yeah. the service and the beer sucks. And you're just like, why can't you just be like QT, dude? What's going on? Yeah. Over here? They're like, that's what we strive in. My All favorite right? now is like, we're there's trying a, to be different. There's a local one down here. Like, there's this gas station that's like been like 20 different names in 20 years. It's been c- come and go. It's been Circle K. It's been qu- like just all these different things. Uh-huh. And now it's like quick shop. Mm-hmm. And then in very fine print, it says, buy Casey's. Oh, whoa. Uh, so they got bought out and they kept it the same. And like, but all the like the donuts and all the food inside it's Casey's branded, but they don't make any fresh food or anything. So it's like Casey's if light. If it doesn't have the Casey's, Casey's pieces, light. then what are they doing? Yeah. It's like, I, I dare you go in Bartlesville and it, like go just like right up the road. You'll see it. And it just says, buy Casey's. <laughs> It's, it's hilarious. Funny. It's like it's like I didn't even know we, Casey's we, had it like that. Casey's light, Casey's is dude. dope. I don't know if you like. I oh, they got the pizzas Casey's. for sure. Oh, no, dude, as a friend of door, like I'm a DoorDasher man, so like uh-huh. I know. Late I thought night. their breakfast burrito was pretty good too. Um, Casey's I think is honestly better than QT coming up now. What do you? What's like one of the best? Things? Their wings. Their wings. They're fucking chicken wings, dude. They have breaded fucking wings that they deep fry. Oh, I don't know about and breaded, the, dude. I mean, like, they're, well, I mean, like they're not, not they're not boneless. They're they're wings. Yeah, but they they just, they just a little like like dredge seasoned and they deep fry. But they're amazing, mm. amazing wings. They do uh the what do you call it the what is that thing uh cheesy tots from Burger King? Yeah, cheesy to oh cheese the, the cheese tots. Have you had those? They're oh. tater tots filled with cheese. What? No, no. They no. have those at fucking Casey's year round. Diabetes, 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 diabetes. Thank you, Wilford. Diabetes, 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 diabetes. 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 So, you got diabetes. And they have chicken strips, fresh pizza, all that stuff, and like it's fucking good shit. I saw the dude from whatever it's called, Barstool Sports, that does the pizza reviews. Yeah, he did a Casey's pizza from he's like a gas station pizza but well i don't i get it for free all the time because like there's a whole bunch of times in doordash where i get free food michaela's really always yeah told me doordash so. is a fucking scam if you really well you don't make a lot but like he like so like 
I tell people like when I do comedy sometimes, you know, I'll stay out till three o'clock in the morning after these shows because like I drive to Tulsa, I didn't make the yeah. gas money back, so I'll do an open mic and then after that I'll go DoorDash in Tulsa and I'll stay out till two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning making a hundred bucks or so DoorDashing. Uh -huh. And what happens is like you'll go to like the North Pier or the I guess it's the Southern. No, North Tulsa, North Tulsa, Peoria kind of area. There's that McDonald's and there's like that uh, Taco Bell and stuff that's open late. And once you get late, DoorDash, there's only like three employees at that McDonald's. Oh, yeah, dude. So like if you go sit in that line, you're going to sit in that line for like 45 minutes. Yeah. So I'll get this order from DoorDash and I'll just sit there and I'll do the hourly wait rate. So it just means I get $10 an hour just to sit there in the parking lot doing nothing, smoking weed. Uh-huh. And about 45 minutes into the order sometimes, people are just like, fuck this. And they cancel the order. Oh, no. And so you get up to the fucking line, and they're like, here you go. And you just get a family meal. Wow. Or you'll get it that we don't have it. Or they'll, it'll happen like three times where they don't have the order. And then you'll yeah. be like the fourth person that gets that order from DoorDash. And they're like, oh, we have it now. Here you go. But it's already been canceled or something in the middle. middle oh, and you get something wow. free. So I've gotten multiple family packs from fucking McDonald's. I've gotten free pizza and breadsticks from Papa John's. Free nice. wings from Casey's. Uh, at Shaq's Papa John's, there, all. in Bartlesville, after ten o'clock, there's only three things open. There's a uh -huh. Casey's, a Taco Bell, and IHOP. So if you want a DoorDash after ten o'clock, that's the only thing that's open. Uh huh. So what would happen was like you know how you could do like multiple orders at once. Like you can do like I want to do uh, right, Taco Bell, long. but I also want you to pick up some fucking laundry detergent at fucking Walgreens. Yeah. yeah. So those orders make you the most bank because I'll go pick up the Casey's order for some wings, and people are like, Oh, I'm gonna be smart. I'm gonna get some tacos on the side. Not knowing uh, that Taco Bell is an hour and a half wait. Uh, so I have ice cream, fucking wings and pizza and shit from ta from Casey's just sitting in my car for an hour. My ice cream melting and shit like that. And I'm in the Taco Bell drive through waiting for the other like three tacos. And eventually they just cancel the whole order. Wow. And so I'm just sitting there like, uh, uh. And so I just give the Taco Bell guy like, you want some Ben and Jerry's? Here you go. <laughs> and they just start eating it. They're like, thanks. Yeah. Like, hey, I lucked out on this, dude. Because they're, they're like, I'm like, because they give me the free tacos. Yeah, and I just give them the free the fucking ice cream that's melting in my car, and I keep door dashing. Nice, and I'm like, that works out. Wow, now I see what you say by scam. Yeah, <laughs> like, dude, it's like behind the scenes, it's so much different. Well, not only that, but like since COVID, I don't know if you door dashed like no, recently, but like, like, have you ever gotten a door dash? Like, yeah, yeah. You see, it's all sealed now, right? Yeah. You can't go into a door dash and be like, hey, make sure to check that it has all the sauce, or make sure that it has no cheese on this and stuff like that. Yeah, we don't see that shit. It's all sealed up, and wrapped right. up. Yeah, right. uh -huh. They don't want us going through your orders and shit. Exactly, yeah. So we have no control over that. So that means we're hands-free on everything. We don't give a fuck. Uh -huh. So now I don't care whatever the special intent is you put in there. We don't have to read it. We don't fucking do anything. We have our hands off with the orders. We're just the fucking delivery guy. You yeah. have no control over your shit. So uh... hands off from us. Bitch out fucking Taco Bell. It's not our fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're stapled and sealed orders. We can't even get into them. Yeah, like, you do know you mean? want me to open your order now? Yeah. Now that you think about it? McDonald's yeah. glues them together now, and even the drinks are inside. You can't see in anything. Wow. Uh, it would always be missing the ranch. Yeah. Always, dude. Freddy's is the worst. They never put in their sauce. That fucking fry Why sauce. Why would you not? Oh, That's really, really what you're known for. Yeah. Th um, that and Panda Express with their fucking teriyaki sauce. Oh man, that yeah. fucking teriyaki that's chicken. They don't put you the sauce order, with it. Yeah, oh, I bet people they're Nazis that's, with it, man. Dude, like, they're they're like, like, like no. That's why when you order from an authentic Chinese restaurant, they just throw in a fucking handful of soy sauce, duck sauce, orange sauce, fucking mustard. Yeah, because they know they've been doing this shit for fifty years. Dude. Um, like, you want to know this crazy hack? Sauce. Huh? Do you know that McDonald's charges you for sauces now? Oh, that's yes. how, they're twenty five dollars, twenty five cents a sauce. I believe it. Wow. If you ask through the through. The, if you go through there's anything say like, I want five barbecue sauces through the drive through it's twenty five cents a sauce they're through they're free through the app nice really so you can go in there and do a McChicken and do like twenty sauces and you get your bag and they're full of twenty sauces and it's free really yeah wow yeah wow there's like these fast food hacks you can do yeah. damn just like the small and the medium fry are the same size Happy McDonald's oh. same size tricky yeah. Tricksters. Um, Michaela go to Chick Fil A. Always be using the app. If you sure. go to Chick Fil A and you just want the chicken nuggets, uh -huh. order the kids meal. And people don't know that you don't have to get the toy as a kids meal. You can alternate it at Chick Fil A and they give you ice cream. So you can get uh, chicken nuggets, fries, a drink, and ice cream for five bucks versus the small chicken nuggets, which is like seven dollars, and you get less Whoa. food. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use that Chick Fil A. Come to the fat guy; he knows fat oh, food. No, tips. that's awesome, dude. Yeah. I'm I'm getting that Chick Fil A today. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Damn, tip, man, that's fucking hilarious. Honestly, yeah. we went through we this 
this has been a very interesting podcast. Uh, yeah, because of all the all the seriousness. Brought to you by Ramp Jam and yeah. Ramp Giving coming up this Saturday. November 18th. November 18th. Mr. Ramp Jam himself here from Ramp Ramp underscore Bain. Jam at Instagram. DM for address. Yes. DM. D- 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 DM. I hope like the inspiration for your name, Kurt Cobain, you don't blow your fucking head off. Um, oh, I got a joke I'm working on about that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it got like, dark there. Uh, all right, okay. Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was the perfect one. I, 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 I think it was going like, to say, like, like okay. I started calling myself like that because I'm kind of similar in Kurt in the way that my wife's probably going to kill me when I go home. <laughs> That was good. I like that one. Right? I thought you were just going to be like, because eventually 20 years later, everybody's going to be like, God damn it, Dave Grohl was better. Oh, <laughs> oh. I can't compete with that. I love Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl is like, my, we talked about Tom Morello. If I had to make a, everybody asked like, what, what would be your super group? Like, you know, maybe yeah. pick, I was like, I would probably have Dave Grohl on drums. Or somebody mm-hmm. like, like everybody goes to Rush or something like that, like Neil Peart. Like, like, yeah, he they're did. great, fantastic drummers. But when I'm making a dram, a band that's going to work together. It's gonna make a cool song together. It's not just like the best technician of every single thing. Yeah, I think Dave Grohl on drums, mixed with Tom Morello on a guitar, have could maybe do something cool for sure. Throw in Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers on bass, just as a jam. Right. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Just something funky and jammy. Uh-huh. And I don't know, singer. You don't need a singer. Oh, we need a singer. It can't be Santana. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, Stinger. We need somebody that like wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't think of some like left peel. Th- um, Stevie Nicks. Stevie. Nicks. Okay, that'd be pretty good. Jam it out. Super Jam Bonnaroo 2024. Here we come. All I'm thinking about. Um, okay, th- I know we got our. Th- I'm referencing all the time. Um, did you ever watch Will Ferrell and Dave Grohl sing Leather and Lace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. No, oh, it's great. So. Um, it's Leather and Lace, Stevie Nicks, and Don Henley, I think it is. Yeah. Um, give for me... Uh, the, uh, the, I don't know the song, but I know Stevie Nicks and Don Henley. Give for me Henley. your leather, take from me my lace. You know, whatever that is. It's Dave Grohl and Will Ferrell singing the parts, and Will Ferrell singing the man part, and he just keeps touching Dave Grohl's thigh, like his mm-hmm. inner thigh, as Dave Grohl's trying to sing, just subtly, just kind of just putting his hand on his thigh live in front of the crowd as they're singing this song. And he's doing this, like, talking about, like, they're doing this history of the song, and as he enters the song, he's talking about how, like, one day, Don Henley was writing this song, and he called Stevie Nicks. and was like, hey, Stevie, you're busy. And she's like, no, I'm just doing this eight ball of coke up my ass crack. <laughs> like, just, oh, my God. Like, no, I'm literally doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Boofing. Yeah. Ow! Oh, sing the song just like she's singing. <laughs> I found a good boofing song the other day on the internet. <laughs> What's a good boofing song to qualify for you? Song. Let's yeah. get Dylan's boofing song yeah. top 10. <laughs> it was just about boofing, dude. It was funny. Oh, really? Yeah, it's they're all painted about, silver and shit. Boof. It was some silly two minute song that came up on Reddit on Drug Circle Jerry. Just boofing and yeah. scooping. Boofing ain't easy. It was Boof, like a rap ain't. song. <laughs> boofing ain't easy. Oh, shit. So it was like, it was. <laughs> Had bars about boofing. Right. It's like spread my ass cheeks open. Right. But about like the third person. <laughs> oh, well, like. Like. I fuck, I can't even think of what does that even mean? Third. I'm thinking of myself in the third person of boofing. <laughs> that's the por- That's the person that's at the. <laughs> boof adjacent, dude. They the were just per- saying for per- you to boof it. They weren't saying they were boofing. Oh, right. so you should boof it. Right. <laughs> You should. The be. third person is the TSA agent. That's yeah, doing the yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that's doing the pat down. He's like looking up there, like you know, you got some. It seems like you've been boofing. Doing something. the cavity check. Yeah, yeah. boot boofing. Jesus, someone <laughs> is boofing like, like the new skeet skeet skeet, where like white people won't know what it means for like five years. So we'll I thought white away. people love boofing. Looks know what it means. Yeah, I thought white. I thought white people were the, like the running the boof race. Masters, yeah, the yeah. Boof well, I just. <laughs> I, the boof man. I just meant like the, the PC people wouldn't know what it means. So it'll slip aside. It'll slip. Uh, Some people just think it means like shitty weed. Yeah, it used to mean shitty weed boof, or like or right. a, or shitty drugs or just they didn't right. work. I knew that a lot. Like with like 
with like the ecstasy game. Right. Like, I these heard are bunk it. Right. Boof, dude. It's almost like botch, like with wrestling botch yep. mania. Yep. Botched. Oh. oh. Botchamania. Shout out Botchamania channel. Guys, if you ever want to watch something funny, watch Botchamania. Nice. Botch is a mess up in wrestling. Uh-huh. Like they screw up. Um a, there's a channel called Botchamania where they just do a clip show of all the hilarious botch, botches that happened recently uh-huh. and they put it to like 8 bit or like video game music and they also nice. do like Simpsons memes with it. So it's like a mixture of like Simpsons memes joke mixed with like video game music mixed with just hilarious bloopers in wrestling. Hey! Oi, oi! I'm up here! Get ready to catch me, all right, on the off chance that I'm not dead the moment I pop off this thing. On three. Ready? One. Two. Three! That's high. It's, it's too high, isn't it, really, that? All right, going on three just gives you too much time to think about it. Let's uh, go on one this time. Okay, ready? One. Catch me, catch Ow! Ow. I am not dead. Do you know what? It just goes to show... People with brain damage are the real heroes in the end, aren't they, at the end of the day? Uh-huh. Makes a great show. It makes a great show. It's fucking hilarious. Um, you also get, like, the, the best wrestling bloopers and, like, promos. Really? If they, if they, if they have, like, they don't just do moves. Tons of be real and shit. It's like whenever there's botches and promos and stuff like that, they put them on there. And they, like, or when they're, you can hear the wrestlers talking in the ring, like, what moves coming in next and stuff. The win for the moment. Shit! I mean, in this matchup. And it might not even be the NXT universe. Oh, okay. Like they, they do all that stuff. Okay. And so, um, there's some hilarious botches just from promos that are just hilarious. I think honestly, a wrestling promo is nothing but like an open mic five minute set. Like, yeah. There's a lot of similarities just, between like being a heel in wrestling and doing a fucking like stand up set. Yeah, they're trying to like riff it. Crowd working, like getting the crowd into the energy and all that mm-hmm. stuff. It's all in, like wrestling. Very everything's wrestling. <laughs> Everything's wrestling. Everything's wrestling. It's a uh, definitely an entertainment sport. Yeah, I mean, and it's an entertainment world of business. Yeah, right. That's why I think there's so many like similarities like comedy and wrestling. Man, that's like I, I I really think that it is an act. You know, like a whole thing they got to rehearse and do that. Yeah, and like you're the going bits. like when you're like the indie guys, you're like just going show to show, like for a hot dog and a handshake and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. I know this one guy on the internet that I follow who's like an amateur wrestler, and I just recently found out that he also plays music in a band. And a professional serial killer. Um, right, right. I don't know him personally. I just know him from the internet. Pers- a personal friend. A personal friend of, uh, through parasocial relationship. Boomer book. Manifested, yeah. dude. I mean, that's what I say all the time, man. Like, I don't, I don't believe universe. it. Yes, luck has to happen a lot. Uh-huh, a lot of hard shit. Work makes luck happen. yes you can be hard luck, hard work just means you're ready for every opportunity yep right just always be fucking ready like i honestly like with no ego i told you i've taken a break from fucking open mics and shit for a while yeah you uh, gotta know when you gotta take a minute dude well with no the personal shit going on that i have going on i was like i gotta step back for a bit that's so why i announced like back in august i'm gonna take a break from stand up for a bit yeah I haven't really been to more than like one open mic or so and like Three months. Yet uh-huh. somehow I looked at my calendar and I'm booked for four shows in November. And I'm like, how the fuck did that happen? Like, nice. Like, how no. the fuck did that happen? You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And I was just like talking to you, like the Rams giving. Right. You were like, hey, can you help me with a flyer? And also, uh, I told, I don't know if I told you. I think I did it in the message. We talked a lot. I talked to Trash about it. Shout out Trash. Uh, you sent me this like wall of text of yeah, like everything yeah. you wanted in the flyer. That yeah, was a shit ton. It was a long shit. I start working on the flyer. It doesn't dawn on me until I'm like three quarters away of the flyer and I'm doing like the who's on this flyer that you booked me. Right, right. <laughs> I'm yeah, putting it's... the names and I'm just typing stuff and I'm like, got the bands, typing the names. I'm like, Jared Rowe. Oh, he booked me on this show. Oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> I was yeah. trying to get out a lot of information before I so forgot I was like, it. oh shit, I'm on this show too. You're like, oh, wait, now I see my name on it. And it happened with Go with fucking Chrissy Isles. Uh, she was doing the, uh-huh. the, the Black Friday show. She was like, do you want to do a flyer? So I'm, happy to get. I'm on the show. You're like, oh, uh, yeah, I can do that, no problem. And I'm like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm enlisted in talent also. I'm like, okay. Nice. It's the perfect type of event for all the people that got picked to put it beyond it. Yeah. Like, the order of the whole thing, the entire environment. I went to the last one. It went great on the last one, honestly. Super better than I could have expected just because it's very difficult to get people 
to like switch gears and pay attention to a comedy show versus like all the other shit that was going on. Yeah. And they were like projecting a video that was pretty cool as well. And I think, I can't remember if they finished and they moved over, but there was definitely still a decent amount of people focused in on this comedy show all the way through the end of the night. Um, in this case, it's going to be like much more scheduled daytime thing. So we'll be like ending at the beginning of the night. Well, also the nice. weather's not so hot. Right. We're going to have fire pits and shit, but honestly, if it's been like it is recently, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's going to be a different environment and stuff, too. Like, you know, the comedy, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be. That's what I'm saying. It's like I pick the right people to set the show off in that way that you're going to have people skating, people like wondering, people that never been to a comedy show. You and know? a certain headliner, this guy over here. He's like, a he monster the at world. It, dude, for sure. <laughs> It'll be fun. It's gonna be <laughs> we set this guy out. He's like, It'll be fun. I like turtles. <laughs> I like it. It's going to be a good time. We're going to have a surprise guest come up during the comedy show, too. I haven't even said anything about but that's why it's a surprise. Oh, oh, yeah. Like everybody that's been announced plus one at nice. some point. For well, this exclusive event that you have to DM to get the info for. Yep, DM yes. ramp underscore jam on Instagram. Yes, please DM. I will send you a sick ass little invite that yeah. looks cool. They made it on the last one. I'm not going to take credit for it, but it is cool as fuck, so I'm still using it. Well, like, like even though we're doing the basically a special like this right now, like a special recording just to promote this show, I kind of like that we also just kind of do a regular talk, because that's what the show is, just, right, just right. chatting. Yeah. I just want this to get high or just chill out, relax, and just have a good chat. Nice. Certainly did that. And then we also sponsor the show or help produce the show. Like, you know, we'll help get some word out for the show. Yeah, but it isn't just, like, some infomercial about the yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The the best one for that I ever saw. Did you ever see uh, the famous thing of Quentin Tarantino going on Tom Segura's like Two Bears One Cave kind of shit? I did not. Uh, I did not see that. So Two Bears One Cave is Tom Segura and Bert. Right, yeah, right. But when they go on tour, they can't always get them both to California, so they have like guest people. Uh -huh. So one of them is the other bear. Uh, well, Quentin Tarantino wrote an autobiography, and he became one of the second. He became a guest person on there, like eight hours before he's supposed to go on there. Like the day, the night before, they send him a send Tom Segura the copy of Quentin Tarantino's book. Yeah, like the night before, so he reads like the opening chapter, maybe. Uh huh. So they start the show, and Quentin just starts t talking about the book and stuff, and Tom's just like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> And he's kind of like faking like he did read it kind of thing because kid, Quentin's asking him about yeah. that. And about three quarters of the way through the podcast, Quentin goes, what was your favorite part? So I was asking about it and Tom starts like sweating. You can tell that he's kind of caught. Yeah. He's like, oh, I like this part. He goes, well, that was just the opening chapter. How hard did you get in the book? And he starts hammering and live on his own podcast. He's calling Tom Segura out for not reading the book. Oh, my gosh. And it's so fucking awkward. And it's Tom like, well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to get around to it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get around to it. <laughs> and, like, it's not like it looks really bad on his part, but it's really not his fault because he only had a couple hours to read a fucking yeah. book. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> and he had that's no idea. Just said it, dude. Like, bro, you gave me this shit last night. Don't even try to play games on yeah. this shit. And he was like, you're coming in just as a guest bear. Like, you're, you know, I know you have to promote your shit. That's why everybody's coming onto a show is to promote something. Yeah. But. We're also just kind of chat. And this was very like Quentin knew and like, I'm here to promote my thing and you don't know anything about this thing. Mm, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. It was very awkward. Yeah, uh, very awkward. So I'm glad we're, we don't have that. I don't want you guys to come in here and like, it's like, we're sponsored by Ramps Giving coming up this Saturday. And let me tell you more about the sponsor. Yes. Let me tell you about now. No, I, th I thought we were just coming to talk about some stuff and yeah. hang out. Yeah, man. It's been the good. With the old stinger right there. Uh -huh. the donkey butter got me for sure. Donkey butter, dude. Donkey, donkey butter kicked your butt. Yeah, dude. donkey butter did good, man. It's always been a classic. And he got that for free. That's so yeah. incredible. Shout out Humboldt dispensaries, man, yeah. for their wheat free weed. They only do it. They only do it on Mondays now. So the other, still though, that's the, yeah. Um, now it's no purchase necessary. You just walk in on Mondays and you get a free gram. Wow, dude. They're yeah. trying to lock people in there. And their top shelf uh, weed is only eighty dollars for uh, an, uh, ounce. What? An ounce or not one of the ounce? Um, a uh, half. A quarter? I don't know the price. Seven grams? 14 grams? I thought it was an ounce. I thought it was an ounce. 28, 28 grams? An ounce is usually 100, right? 28 grams. Is it? Well, I mean, pricing wise, it's like 100, around 100 just for top shelf for so usually like 100. Uh, it just depends. Everything's it depends. so cheap. I, now. I'm, no, dude, I've seen some shit for like, it's for like a 55 and a half ounce. Damn. Yeah. It's yeah. cheap now, dude. People are trying to get rid of shit before it goes bad. Uh-huh. Well, I think what I was getting at was I think on their flyers or something like that, they have like their top shelf for like $80 an ounce right now. 
Damn, it. um, that's pretty incredible. Like it's on their their front flyers. Like they, if you go by their glass in the middle of downtown Bartlesville, they have Humboldt Dispensary, and it's just on the front glass that has the biggest finds. It says eighty dollar top shelf. I think it's for an ounce, mm. and then on free weed Mondays. Mm, interesting. Yeah, nice. it's where I got my little pipes. Too. Like I don't know how they make money. I don't know how they fucking. <laughs> I don't know how much my little Spider Man pipe. Nice. Oh, that one's sick. That's I love this cool. little, little eight dollar pipe. That's pretty cool. A little hitter. I liked your piece. Yeah, man. Yeah, that one works nicely. It's nice and clean. Mm-hmm. I want I my dream. I told you about it. Uh, my favorite X Man oh, is nice. Nightcrawler. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I love Nightcrawler. Uh huh. And he has that purple smoke. Like he kind of like bo- he, he yeah. bamps. We you know we talked about boofing. <laughs> yeah. But his is called bamp. Like whenever that's this actual sound that they write on the comics. Whenever he teleports, bamp. It goes bamp. Uh-huh. And then like he disappears in pink and purple smoke. Okay. I want somebody to make a fucking glass piece and then like use that pink and purple smoke. Oh, glass, make okay. that pink and purple glass, translucent glass, and then maybe like put like a nightcrawler figure or have him in there or like paint a little nightcrawler on him or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. But have like the overall piece be like his smoking, like he's teleporting. Glass blowers, listen. Yeah, yeah. make me a little piece that's yeah. like a purple, pink and purple smoke. And then I'll put a little nightcrawler on or something they like that. Make it cool or it That'd looks put, cool uh, in the black light. I like that color scheme. Yeah. That color scheme. Because like everybody up. like does, I see like and there's Spider Man, there's Deadpool, there's yeah. Rick and Morty shit everywhere. I mean, I have oh, Rick yeah, and Morty tray. Time. Big time. But like, I want to see some Nightcrawler shit. Nightcrawler is fucking... Yeah, he's a cool-ass character yeah, for sure. He's my favorite Dope. character. Dope yeah. character. did good depicting him in the movie on the first one. Yeah, and then they kind of did him dirty. Like, Nightcrawler suffers from, like, the 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 same, like, the plot armor thing, or, like, he's just too good. Right. Where, like, you have to write him out of the script. It's kind of like Superman. Right. Superman... Too many powers. Superman is mostly... Most people think Superman's boring and they hate Superman because it takes a good writer to really use him well. Uh-huh. Because 90% of... Writers that don't know how to use Superman will be like the Justice League movie, where it's like, okay, well, we just have to have him dead for three quarters of the movie. Otherwise, the movie can't happen. Right. Because Superman just solves it. Right. Yeah. If you put Superman in anything, 90% of the fucking outcome is Superman can just fix it. And if you watch the Justice League movie, that's exactly what happens. I don't know if you watched it, like the old jo- the Zack no. Snyder movie. Uh-huh. I might have seen it. He's but... dead for three quarters of the movie, and then they're all getting their ass kicked, and then they just bring Superman to the last fight, and he just beats him in like two punches. Like, fuck it should have been here the whole time yeah that's basically the plot Jesus. like and so it's kind of one of those things where like people hate him but like nightcrawler man is like they have to write him out of the script because you got a teleporter he can pretty much solve like 90 percent of anything that happens right so you gotta write him out of the script somehow something has to happen to him um they did that with quicksilver in the x-men movies right i noticed that too i thought that was like a shitty little they had that kick-ass quicksilver treat, scene right just one scene um you know who we're talking about right did you ever watch the x-men movies yeah. Remember Quicksilver, the guy that then they slow down time and they have him like freeze everybody and he's doing uh-huh. like the slow mo. Yes. He's going so fast, he's slow mo time. Uh huh. That was so popular in those X Men movies. They've had like each one of the, they had this, like a Quicksilver scene in every additional movie. And then they have to somehow write him out of the script because he would solve everything. Uh, he's too powerful. It's just like, it, so, it'd be too easy. Yeah. So every movie after that was like, here's the Quicksilver screen. Oh shit, he broke his leg. <laughs> right. They do that in like the the Dark Phoenix one. Yeah. He does he, like he starts the movie and like five minutes in the movie they break his leg. He's like, sorry, yeah, we can't like, use it. <laughs> no, no, it's not gonna work this time. They, so we're gonna have to get the normal plot. Yep, yeah, they kill Mystique because Jennifer Lawrence is tired of being blue. And, right. <laughs> and they break. Ti- I'm tired of just some guy touching my titties. Yeah, <laughs> Jennifer yeah. Lawrence got that Hunger Games movie money in the middle yeah. of being Mystique. Right. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Like, she was so rich. I'm watching, like, they're making the new Hunger Games shit, too, now. What? They're making a prequel to Hunger Games. Oh. Yeah. Because people want to... Okay, it's a prequel to the Hunger Games, and it follows the Donald Sutherland character as a young guy. Uh. Who wants to follow the origin story of the evil bad guy from fucking Hunger Games that leaves roses to people? Yeah, no. Weird. Who cares? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, that is a weird. That's weird what I'm side saying. Story. We don't need it, dude. They're but, just trying uh, to cash cow, dude. It's gonna be one of those cash cow ones. Like leading up to that, I was watching some videos on YouTube of like people like behind the scenes of Hunger Games, and like she got so rich. Like the first movie, she only got paid like three hundred thousand dollars. Really? Which sounds like a, not a lot, but like yeah. you know, when you, Jennifer Lawrence in her first big blockbuster movie. Yeah, they didn't know Seems it was like, gonna be. Yeah. A hit. yeah, and then like the next movie, she made like five million. Uh, and it was so much afterwards that she even stopped dyeing her hair. She had to use wigs for the rest of it. She she stopped dyeing her hair because naturally she's blonde. Uh, so like in between like the first one, they treated her like shit. The second one, the third one, and the third one, part two, she had wigs on and they treated her like a fucking megastar. And then on that, on that same time, she was signed to like an overall picture deal to X-Men where you had to keep coming back to the sequels no matter what. Uh, wow. 
And she was like, first one was like Hunger Games where she was a nobody. So they painted her blue and she's Mystique and she's in the fucking I prosthetics. In the helicopter and like, shit. She's in the prosthetics like uh, makeup booth for like eight hours a day getting fucking painted and scaled yeah. up. And then she gets famous and she still has to do it. That's pretty incredible. So they have to keep like, and then they're also like, oh, well, she's the biggest name in all of our X-Men movies because it's Jennifer Lawrence. So we have to make Mystique the main star of these movies. I don't know if you remember that. Like she made, they made her like a main character. Yeah, they did. Mystique's never been a main character of anything. <laughs> she's just a silent assassin and she's the mom of Nightcrawler. Yeah. That's wow. it. Mm -hmm. and they did throw it back to her in the ones when they went back in time and shit. Yeah. But like they had to keep pushing Jennifer Lawrence front and center in these movies and she doesn't want to be the role. But because she's a big name, they push they push her into the role. Like, yep, eight hours later, and then you got to hold the movie up. Yeah. Wow. And then by like the third or fourth one, she's like, I don't want to be here anymore. So like they kill her off in the first like five minutes. And she's like, thank God. Thanks, guys. Yeah. And even then, that prosthetics is, if you notice, like all of a sudden, every single character has the matching jumpsuit. So they only have to put makeup on from up here. Wow. Uh, she has a full body suit on. <laughs> oh, made it so much easier. Yeah. So they just do prosthetic hands, face, and then they That's just suck an impaler on a log. And like, oh, I gotcha. <laughs> like, yeah. If, sorry, sorry. Main character, main, one of the main, biggest stars is now no longer in the park. Yeah. There's always a silver linings playbook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. That makes so much sense, though. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That yeah. Make, it's great. That's hilarious. Like, that's why they did the, did the, uh, uh, suits like yeah. that so that well, they wouldn't have to like make all this other stuff yeah. like ah well it's like people really crack up about like Wolverine like Wolverine's gonna come back uh -huh. I've seen like, that like Hugh Jackman's coming back for Deadpool 3 he's reviving Wolverine yeah, yeah. and they show the scene he's like in the full yellow suit like he's in the he's in the suit it. Yeah, for the yeah. first time ever and people are like it's not authentic because he has yellow sleeves he's not showing his bare arms he had skin cancer <laughs> They made a modification to his suit to be full body so he could actually film outdoors while he was going through skin cancer treatments. Wow. And it makes no difference. He still looks badass. Yeah. He and he's like cool. 50 years old, ripped as Wolverine. Jesus. They're just care they're like, it's not authentic because this little spot right here is yellow. <laughs> wow. And wow. I'm like, it still looks badass. Do you want him or not? Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. want him or not? Like, they, they bitch about that. They don't make it anything that they kind of miscast Wolverine in the first place. Wolverine's supposed to be short. Mm -hmm. Wolverine is supposed to be a short man complex character. It's his entire identity. Yeah, it's a Wolverine. That's why he's like tiny. He's a <laughs> he put him next. Do you see the difference? Uh. Even the women. He's the same height as the women. This is on a stand. But like he's five foot two or five foot one. Yeah, okay. So he's, a little... he's a short dude, and he has a short guy complex. That's his entire character mentality. He's in. He's That's a, he, why he tries so hard. He tries so hard, and he's like the fucking pit bull. Like the he's a Wolverine, and uh -huh. like he heals. And like when you cast Hugh Jackman, who's six something. It kind of takes away from that character a little bit, and yeah, so that's, that's why they do it in all the blockbusters. Yeah. They gotta look at Tom Cruise from the bottom yeah. That, up that's why shit. all the MCU characters only have their mask on for like thirty seconds. Right. <laughs> really. They don't, watch. Look at all the movie posters. You don't see them like Captain America with his mask on. You don't see Robert Downey Jr. with the Iron Man helmet on all the time and all the posters and stuff. It's Robert Downey Jr. Oh, like they even wrote it into the script to make it easier. Ant Man Two. The fucking movie is a piece of shit. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just be real. Um, it's Ant Man and the Wasp, and it has yeah. hardly any Wasp. Right. And um, right. I thought, so I they make it, it like a an plot point origin story or something where he gives up the suit because he's on like house arrest or something like that, and he has no more Ant Man suit between Ant Man one and two. So they make a new suit, and the biggest upgrade to this suit is a retractable CGI helmet for anybody that wears these Ant Man and Wasp costumes. Like, do you see that Ant Man helmet up there? Yeah. How big and cumbersome that is. Now it's just CGI and just disappears in like one millisecond. Because it's nanotechnology. Yeah, yeah. But they made a point to write that into the script. Like, he puts on this new suit and he goes like this and it just snaps back. And now because they explained that for one second, every Marvel movie uses that for every single suit. Really? It's just a way to be like, oh, we don't have to have him in the mask anymore very much. It's just like, if you notice like in game, all this, like, the mask is going to retract back. Nice. It's just a marble staple because now we're used to it. Uh, and it's just a way it to show it the easy. actor's faces better. And makes it easier, less. Oh, that's pretty. 
That makes a lot of sense. That's a, that's a in. incredible writing. Yeah, right. that's incredible writing. Yeah, that's like I hate lazy writing. Like, you can get a lo- away with a lot of shit if you like explain it. It takes one line of dialogue and you can fix a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to wear the fake mask all the time on the set either. Yeah. That's why, like, they Sweating really in it and shit, breathing in it. Well, it's like Captain Marvel, and like they're having the new Marvels movie coming out. And they have Miss Marvel. I don't know if you watched that show on Disney Plus. Oh, uh, I've seen it. Yeah, it's a good show actually. Yeah. Um, they changed her powers. Oh no! In the movies or in the comics, she's like Mister Fantastic, where it's stretchy. She has uh-huh. stretchy powers. She calls it embigging, and she gets basically big fists, big hands, and she can turn big and she stretches. Well, that's not attractive. It's not attractive <laughs> to make a fourteen or fifteen year old girl stretchy skinned on a Disney Plus show. It doesn't look good. Uh-huh. It looks creepy. And also get them some weird fetishes and stuff. And they were yeah. like, we're just going to avoid all of that. And now her powers are just like light based. Or like she stretches, but it's like mystical light based kind of right. animation. Okay. So like it's like a magic fist instead uh, of like her skin her actual, actually stretching to a giant fist. I get you. Kind of almost like Green Lantern. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Okay. Because it was like it just they just kind of went around this whole can of worms. And yeah, I'm like, it makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. But other people are like, it's not comic authentic. It's like Wolverine's fucking sleeves. It's like, come on, dude. We're we're doing our best. Bro. 2023, dog. Yeah. Come on. This episode of Unloading Me is not brought to you by your favorite mobile banking app, such as Cash App. Man, I love using Cash App, especially when I'm doing things other than buying drugs. Cash App. Well, guys, just wrapping it up. Thank you guys so much for coming up on the show. Um, Thanks for having us. Thank I'm you. so happy to be on the card with you guys. And gonna thank you for having one. me on Rants Giving, man. I'm for honored sure. to be on the, on the card. That's going to be a cool show, dude. Yeah, it's going to be killer, dude. Yeah. Adrian Corwin, um, Nicola Burkett here, Jared Ralphie Allen, Trash, Haley Parker, and a special guest to be announced the day of the event, November 18th. Nice. Guys, make sure if you want to come up to Ramp Jam Presents Ramps Giving, uh, brought to you by the great um, John and Lori. Yeah, John and Lori helped John, us throw it together. Shout They're out the to John and Lori. Shout out John and Lori. And provided the space. They're, pre- they're, help- they're presenting the They'll Ramp be Jam. Out there shaking hands and everything at the Ramp Jam. Yep. Presents Ramps Giving. We're going to have a whole bunch of awesome bands, guys. Contests for best tricks, right? Yeah, yes. definitely. Best trick contest where we got. Uh, Skull Knife Baby. He's got some skateboard decks and he makes hoodies and beanies and stuff nice. like that. He'll be out there with a the booth. And then we'll be throwing up like two skate decks from that for the competition. The Quickie Mart's going to be out there. They said they're going to bring some cool shit to throw out at some product talk. Right. There's people maybe helping us cater it. But in the event that they're not, still come out and support their sick ass tacos. They're Guys, pretty dope. treat this like a speakeasy. Okay, it's like a hush hush thing. It's a secret thing. It's an exclusive event. That's right. why you see the flyer. You're not going to see the address posted everywhere on Facebook. Once we give out so many addresses, that's going to be it that's for it. the There's event. There's not an event bright link for this shit, guys. It's like an eyes wide shut party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just just consent, kidding. Is no. a, consent is applied. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. It will be. <laughs> no, consent is mandatory here. Yes. Um, oh. It will be BYOB. So if you do want to drink and you bring your own beer, bring your we own will. Uh, <laughs> Be asking for IDs for 21 and up so we can give you a wristband. We know everybody's cool. We're going to have staff march with buttons. Right. You'll be able to ask people with a button a question if you have one. And uh, let's see. I think that's about it. BYOB, bring bring your own chair, dude. We're also going to have some chairs there, but it's like an outside lawn event. We're going to have bonfires and shit. So bring your own chair if you want to sit down and chill. Guys, this is going to be... An amazing event. This is the third one, right? Third yeah, Ramp Jam. Third one. Third Ramp Jam. Third Ramp Jam. It presents Ramps Giving, guys, November 18th, this Saturday. Dylan Turpto Bain himself has been influential behind the scenes putting Thank this you. together. Killing it. Killing it, man. Nicolo is going to be headlining the comedy. We got some killer bands, some killer uh, skateboarding going to happen. Free shit going to be given out. Best tricks. We're going to have water. Uh, I especially put on the flyer. Free water. Free, free water. water. <laughs> yes. If you're skating out there, you're going to get free water. I got shit it. on that on one of the flyer posts. <laughs> Somebody was like, oh, free water. And I was like, like, dude, if you're skateboarding for eight hours, you want some free fucking yeah, water. You want to be able to know that there's water provided. Yeah. yeah. There'll be some there. And trash cans and a porta potty. It's like, have you guys seen Burning Man? You guys remember when it, mud- it got muddy this yeah, year? Yeah, we're not trying to have that. Yeah, we don't want to go and have, hey, guys, we're having you come out to this exclusive event that we're not going to give you the address for we're also not going to trap you out there with no water yeah just right. so you know 
This isn't the fire festival. This isn't Burning Man 2023. We're on for a good time at Rams Giving. Yeah, we're gonna have transparency there. Yeah. We're gonna have kick ass entertainment from music and comedy. Right. We're gonna have a kick ass time with some skateboarding, some tricks, some fun times, some great vendors, great bands, great people. Everybody cool. And we'll Dylan, my there. man, where can they get info and who do they need to DM to get the address? Ramp underscore jam on Instagram for the address. Nice. Guys, it is this Saturday, November 18th. Thank you guys so much for coming on and Thanks helping for us talk about it. Appreciate it. I, I hope this helps out the event. I will be there, guys. Nicola's the headliner for the comedy. Thank you again for coming on. Give it up once more time for Dylan Walters and Nicola Burkett, guys. I've been Jared Woo! Ralphie Allen. Thank this you. is unloading me. Unload me. The Ramps Giving Special. What's up, guys? Bye. Peace. Bye.